It is Judgment Day, the finals of the Copa Paulino Alcantara 2023. We've got Kaya FC, Iloilo, and Davao Aguilas, UMAC. One juggernaut and one returning club right here. And there can only be one as we will culminate this tournament. This is Claro Manzano on call for this match alongside Ivan Cayares. And thank you very much for tuning in. Wherever you may be, you are catching this on the Philippines Football League social media pages. The Pilipinas Live app, One Sports Plus, so paki download the lang at like, share, at subscribe as we come to you from the historic Rizal Memorial Stadium. And what a match we have on hand right here, Ivan, to culminate, let's say, the domestic competitions dito sa Pilipinas. Well, the competition started with 17 teams, unprecedented for this competition, and now we go boil down to two. So both of these teams really came from uh, th different groups and uh, different journeys. Kaya FC, Iloilo, Davao Aguilas Football Club. Kaya clearly the Giants here. Davao clearly just the David in this David Goliath match. Davao Aguilas again, a returning club of sorts to the domestic football scene. Kaya, on the other hand, have been representing the Philippines in the grandest stage of club football in Asia. As we will take a look at our bracket or that road to the finals again to see how the teams got over here to the finals and what a road it has been in the Kaya undefeated in nine games. Davao have picked up a draw, a loss and seven wins but both teams looking good we could say. Oh, it was a very interesting competition for uh, Davao Aguila Sumac. They played against CF Manila, won by a 2-0 aggregate and then pabunta naman sa, uh, to the semi-finals, a 2-1 aggregate win over the favorites Dynamic Herb Cebu FC where they won the first game by 1-0 and then finished with a draw on the second. Very surprising result there for Davao uh, over the, uh, the top players. And also, ito namang Kaya literally breezed through the knockout stages beating UP by 11-0 on aggregate. Tapos pagdating naman against Stallion, comfortable 2-1 wins over two legs and they're here in the final. And I stand corrected earlier, Dava have six wins, two draws, and one losses. One loss in the course of nine games. The likes of Paulo Bugas, Troy Limbo, Serge Kaole. We're big for them dito sa ating knockout rounds. While for Kaya, of course, they found their goal scoring everywhere just to show how stacked they are in terms of talent. But key goals came from the likes of Ricky Sendra, Nano Amita, and Justin Bass. So, Ivan double-legged ang ating quarterfinals and semi-finals but just to be clear here before we start the game this game will be played over 90 minutes only wala nang two legs or second leg should we be tied after 90 minutes we will be having extra time or the dreaded penalty shootout for fans some neutrals of course love it enjoy na enjoy sila dun as we will take it over to the team lineups kaya fc ilo ilo um, are the team, of course, to beat, we could say, the most titles picked up already in the history of this tournament with two. And here's what we have in store. The very stacked lineup dito para sa Kaya FC. Obviously, you have the likes of the best player of the uh, Philippines League so far. It's Daiso Horikoshi, who will spearhead the attack, coupled with kasama to si Justin Bass, Ricky Sandra, and a very uh, strong and experienced defensive line. Uh, led by Simone Rota. But we do want to see uh, a lot of uh, help from the others on the bench as well. That's correct, of course. So let's see who will be able to step up. We've been able to see that Dito Sakaya FC, Iloilo again. They've been facing that acid test in the AFC Champions League. And when we zoom in further, one of the many players to look out for is Daiso Horikoshi. And could you talk us through his game? Well, Daiso Horikoshi, very deadly on the wings, on either side can create can pass can shoot he does it all for Kaya FC and especially this Japanese ace uh, playmaker has shown his quality in AFC competition so far a whopping six goals and 15 assists for Daiso Horikoshi in nine matches for them as then again they are battered by head coach Colin Curtis who's had credible stints in Cambodia and Jose UEFA pro license as we will jump ship to, we could say, David in form of Davao Aguilas Yumac, led by their coach in Haber John Rosgal from the University of Santo Tomas. And it looks like they're going for a lot of main guns, Ivan, and may mga absent sila dito. 
So glaring absences, uh, clearly, for uh, Davo Aguilas. Pete Forosuelo and OJ Clarino are out. Two key cogs in their defense, which actually brought them here uh, to the stage already. But we do have people who could slide in uh, in that position. So um, we have Cartalarok playing in at that position and then Sifofana as well slotting in a center back. But we do want to talk about the mga starters. Nila. They have Yannick Tuason, very trusty up top. Mar Mari Angeles in the middle and especially the all-important Paulo Bugas who has done wonders on that midfield. Also take note that we have Troy Limbo, the number 98. Uh, he's very deadly. He has scored a beauty of a goal in the earlier stages of the knockout rounds and we will expect that from him today. So a combined 13 goals between Kaole, Limbo and Tuason. But let's see who will step up because yun nga. Uh, may mga absence, absences sila on defense. Another player who is also missing is ang substitute nila whom they would use at times as a spark plug, spark plug in Hakim Dalam. So, medyo bawas ang bench options nila. But we were talking about it earlier. Who will be that player to look out for? Madami rin, di ba? Given the talent that they have. But let's zoom in on one of them. Uh, we want to see how Paulo Bugas, he's a veteran. He's been there, uh, been to different clubs already. One of the key players out of Far Eastern University, UAP MVP. Now he will uh, talk to him earlier and he's, uh, you know, the team for him is ready to take on this challenge. We know that, that they know that um, they have uh, their backs against the wall, against a very mighty Kaya squad, one of the best squads in their histories as well. But this is a final, anything can happen and th they would want to play with that. So they'll try to bank on that experience that they also have of sorts when we refer to the squad. It's a new team, pero kita nga natin, ang dami nilang players with professional experience here and there playing in the top flight of the Philippine football circuit over the past few decades or so, we could say. As, again, we got to go through the team lineups again. 4-3-3 ang Davao Aguilas, UMAC. 3-4-3 ang Kaya FC Iloilo. And how would you break down these formations which seem relatively advanced in this game. Well, currently, itong uh, Kaya FC, they have the talent, the depth to really deliver. Technically, they are listed as 3-5-2, but they do uh, transition uh, pretty effectively to that very strong role. Now, we do expect Kaya FC to go all out today because they want titles. They want to get this cup competition already done with. We know they played nine games have won all of them. They haven't lost here. But uh, the key to that for Davao, again, is to make sure to limit Kaya's uh, thre uh, threats uh, on the defensive end. Alam naman nila, their backs are against the wall, playing against a really uh, good uh, um, uh, offensive team. Pero they have consistently performed in the knockout stages, did well defensively. It's just uh, unfortunate that they lost two of their key defenders. But, you know, this is a final. Everyone can step up and really bring the game to their opponents. We can say diamonds are made in the rough at. Sabi ni Coach Aber John Rusgal, this is the true test for them because they are also looking big picture sa Philippines Football League. If they, they, they can do well here or should they have any shortcomings, they can address that moving forward. But in the process, eyes are on the prize, the trophy that we could see in the background already. And we've seen some magic in the cup also. Um, we could say my mga upsets then here and there as you said the Davao upset um dynamic herb Cebu FC but when you are Kaya I got to speak with coach Colum Curtis he wants this to be straightforward because that's how they have been when we refer to Kaya FC Iloilo forwarding 55 goals already in this competition over nine matches only allowing four so they have the best offense and defense statistically for Davao on the other hand they have been able to score 18 goals but concede 10. But mind you, their defense has really improved sa knockout rounds, only conceding one goal as we are moments away to, uh, um, to the players taking to the pitch. And what do you think will have to be the keys to the game here for Kaya to succeed or for Davao Aguilas? Well, Kaya, they just have to be prolific. Uh, they have no choice but to really convert their chances early on. They want to close the game as early as the first half. That's why they want to put on the pedal to the metal early. Davao Aguilas, they just have to survive the onslaught, pick their attacking positions, and maybe, just maybe, get through that uh, Kai defense. 
which has been stellar so far. So if this game could lead on to extra time or potentially penalty shootouts, we could see Pabor ang Davao Aguilas UMAC dito. But for Kaya, of course, it's about pouncing early, capitalizing on their firepower as we'll take it down already to the field for the walk-in. Players taking to the pitch already as we are running through our pre-match ceremonies and we see in your in their sky blue uniforms ang ating match officials Mick John Pineda is the referee Chris Mark Nanyola and Paul Galicia are our assistants or linesmen in charge sa offside si Meliton Pelayo ay ang fourth official Gerardo Andres ay ang referee assessor and Christy Ramos is the match Commissioner, as you see, Kaya Iloilo pictured running through their or getting through their starting photos already before we get on to the toss coin. A little bit of Copa history for everyone. This, this competition was started in 2018 and it was Kaya FC Iloilo who won the first edition against Davao, technically the second final for Davao as well. In 2019, it was Ceres Negros FC who won on a 2-1 victory against Kaya. It was uh, 15 players in the lineup uh, going up against the full Kaya squad. In 2020, there was, no, um, there was no event for this competition because of the pandemic. But in 2021, Kaya won their second title, winning 1-0 against ADT. Well, as recently, in 2022, it was United City FC who won three goals to two against Kaya. And... Kaya really wants to get this badly. They want to get their third Copa to their trophy already that has to be stacked already with trophies. And when we look back at that inaugural Copa final that was played on October 17, 2018, and Kaya have about seven holdovers from that squad. Marco Casambre with Kaya right now, but he was actually with Davao Aguilas back in the day. So may seven holdovers yung Kaya FC. And again, Davao left top flight football for some time and they are back again. First tournament back, and dito na sila sa finals as we are running through our final huddles already. So Davao Aguilas, UMAC in their all white uniforms. We'll see Kaya pictured later on in their all black. And going back to that Going back to the, the bit of history, it was Jovin Bedik who scored for Kaya in the inaugural final, in the finals of the inaugural edition of the tournament. And close to kickoff already. And then we have uh, some bit of information, a swap in the main and fourth official. So right now it will become Melitan Pilayo on the pitch, while ito naman si Mick John Pineda will become the fourth official. Kaya FC in triple black, Davao Aguilas UMAC in triple white. I do expect a lot of fireworks in the first opening minutes of this match. So please stay tuned and uh, hope everyone enjoys this. As we have had quite an electric atmosphere already as this match was kicked off. Taken quickly by Abu C. But it looks like he hit the deck. 
and it will stay with Kaya. Exactly what you said. They want to start quick from the get-go. Yan ang pinakita nila. And uh, as we see, uh, Abu C and Dodong Villarreal on the screens. Dodong, the veteran, uh, he made sure that uh, Abu C did not get any opportunity to get through there. Could have been a yellow. Uh, Adi a red, pero just a regular foul for now. Sabi ni referee Meliton Pilayo. No love lost. Those two once teammates together with Stallion Laguna FC. Stallion now, or our semi-finalists, they fell to Kaya in the semi-final round, losing on aggregate. As we have the likes of Melisa and Taizo stepping up to the plate. Pick your poison. Taizo, of course, with statistics favoring him. The Japanese speedster. And Taizo takes it. It was absorbed by the wall, though. Davao could not trigger a counter with Kaya getting their numbers forward. Davao playing a little safe there, getting their numbers back. Well, I, I thought Paolo Bugas had the chance to hold on to the ball for a bit, but alam niya na he's being encroached on by uh, the different uh, guys wearing black. The long ball forward. Looks like this was Meliza. It's still in. Looking for a teammate. The low cross. Pero nakuha ni Dodong Villarreal. And this ball taking some altitude. Sandra, the loose touch. Davao cannot get out of the danger area and they finally do through a clearance. Some jitters there from Nick Ferrer. Parang hindi siya nakapag-isip kung ano gusto niya doon. A bit of a final pressure perhaps. So both teams, mind you, in their previous games do like to dictate possession. So if Davao in unfamiliar territory having to play defense and another collision Daiso on the pitch got clipped there. I believe it was uh, Dodong Villarreal. Dodong Villarreal already bringing out enforcer duties. But he will have to be careful as that could eventually lead to cards, as you said, even in the get go. Ito ang yare. It was uh, a bit of a ball on ball scenario, but foul possession is with Davao. Dini Watara from Ivory Coast. Of course, Watara's been with the Philippine football community for a very long time already. Alongside a great number of expats, we could say. Kofana did not get that well. Nano. Pero ni Watara. Watara will have to be that driving force or that cornerstone for them. Dito sa kanilang depensa. Especially since they are missing two players again from their starting defense in OJ Clarino and Pete Porosuelo. Here's the chance now. Daiso couldn't get it again. Running into some traffic. But he recovered. Unable to get it to Abusi. Davao a chance to grow in confidence. Kaole. Will he get goal number five at the least this evening? So bit by bit, we could see Davao gaining a little bit of confidence. A good coverage there from Sendra. Fortunately, it's called a foul against him. No, nakakita natin, Davao Aguilas has uh, some possession as well. Uh, given that you know, this uh, Kai, mighty Kaya side has really I mean, controlled the pace of this game. Uh, they have been trying to unleash the speedsters nila on the flanks. The likes of Nano, Jess, Melissa, and Daiso. But it's steadfast naman ang Davao so far. This first five minutes. So just a young match. Both teams will try to feel each other out. Let's see who will prevail as we'll carry on. But a chance. Banggaan na naman. Sa loob ng goalkeeper box. But it is with Watara. Uh, the referee did not see anything wrong with that. Shoulder to shoulder naman with Dodong and Daiso. No. You know, these guys, they look, they look small, but they're very tough. So... Mahirap silang tumbahin basta basta. Especially with that core control, putting in the work in the gym. Siempre sa football pitch din. Mari was had that for a moment. Davao now getting touches through the midfield. 
As you say that Ferrer Jr. got dispossessed. Oh, Davao should be tidy with their passes. Hindi ka pwede magkamali against Kai FC. Oh, they're playing in the AFC Champions League level, which is the highest level of football in this continent. So you're expected to do a very, very little mistake because you'll get paid. You'll pay for it dearly once you do. So with pressure comes to Mari Angeles, Paolo Bugas, and itong si Jomare Sapal, who is in the number eight role. Number eight din siya, it's a defensive midfield role. So very ambitious for Davao to go on a 4-3-3 formation given that na napakalakas uh, on the counter itong Thai FC. So the 4-3-3, yan ang ginagamit ng Davao throughout the course of this season. Coach Aberjan Rosgal did say he wants to test their play style, especially because they are looking forward or preparing for the PFL. Collision again. Referee says no foul. It was Daiso. Madodong Villarreal being tested and tested and is showing up in this game for the defense. Oh, we should take a look at that replay there. Daiso was complaining of the contact. Maybe he has something there on that complaint. Oh, we have to wait for the ball to the pause. Should we go back to that? So the likes of Saito, Nakai Simone Rota, telling them to slow it down already. Audi Menzi. Speaking of Menzi, we do have a great number of FEU Tamaraus who are competing, whether it be with Kaya or Davao. And there was a foul that went against Abu Si, running into Johan Fofana. A bit of uh, frustration from Abu Si. He clipped Fofana in the back there. Take a look at this long ball to Abu Si. Did not have a chance there, but lang, because of his longer strides, the contact lang talaga siya. Seems unintentional from Abu Si. Abu Si, of course, a hefty player who packs great speed. We'll yeah. Take a look at this replay. Hey, Daiso might have a case there with the, the shoulder of Dodong on the back, but I think the referee interpreted it as too soft to really call the penalty. Dodong Villarreal appeared to be just running behind the process. Rota receiving pressure from Limbo. Oh, good pressure from Troy Limbo. Alam niya na na corner don si Simone, given that Fitch Arboleda, the captain, is slightly forward. Limbo did get some football education also in the United Kingdom and was a youth national team member, especially, or lalo na sa U22. Uh, he has uh, participated in the SEA Games and all other age group competitions. One of the most trusted players that you have uh, during his, uh, his, his current ba his batch. Scored a wonderful goal in the knockout stages. In knockout and or wonderful goals, of course. There's a long and growing list for Davao Aguilas. Paulo Bunga is giving one of them, potentially the most crucial one. And they switch it over to Arboleda, the skipper. And they gutsy slide from Ferrer. Davao Aguilas really holding on here, given a uh, ano talaga tinotodo ng KFC on the flanks, trying to break down this sturdy Davao formation. Rota got to poke it to Sandra, the Argentinian. Saito. Both players again in attacking oriented formations. The 4 3 3 for Davao. Kaya in a 3 4 3. Just a little bit more advanced or straightforward, we could say. Now, surprisingly, Davao Aguilas, Davao Aguilas UMAC, they're, they're on a high line defensively. So, they're not trapping the attack of Kaya. Also, they're also clogging that passing lanes um, for, for Kaya to. Really build on that defense. Maybe they're getting chest match now in La Runa. Then Kaya trying to control the tempo and trying to find some weak spots in the Davao formation. And speaking of chess matches, that will just prove to go up in terms of difficulty. Shempre mamaya we expect our coaches to utilize their respective substitutions. Nano, Sandra, Rota, storming forward from that 
right center back position. Arboleda found space now. Combined with Abu C. Got a touch, but it was blocked and ran into the defense in the process. Mm -hmm. He wins a corner in that possession. Pitcher Boleta tried to one-two with Simone Rota, and uh, at least it you know, brought it to fruition. It on corner kick, you know, high. Uh, Kaya, one of the tallest teams in this competition, got the likes of Akita Abusi, Baas Simone Rota. There's also Ricky Sandra joining the foray, but Melisa, Justin Bass. Rota got to recover it. We get to reset a bit. The cross, header off the woodwork, close but not quite. Oh, Odi Menzi did very well there, picked his spot. Good gesture from Akito. And then before that play, Menzi has scored some, some headers as well. He asked for that ball and specifically headed it to the bottom of the post. Keeper beaten almost for Kaya FC, but Lucky for Davao Aguilas Yuma. I think you will still take it, of course, if you are Kaya. Getting a shot almost on target as a result of piling up the pressure, running that offense of theirs well like an orchestra. Now again, Davao on a high line, trying to make sure na they'll try to catch Kaya offside here. Pero yung flags talaga ng Kaya, yung mga sa side sa wingers nila, doon nila gusto pumasok at all times. Currently being blocked very well by the midfield of Davao Aguilas. Of course, as you have that, those four midfielders and they could be joined by the left and right center backs as Arboledo wins it from his hard work and it is poked away by Ferrer. May throw in sila ulit. And it's from deep. A bit of shaky there for Nick Ferrer on that uh, left-hand side. Not really good if you're pay facing the Kaya captain in Fitch Arboleda, who is known to be very flexible. He has played wing back, right back. He can put him in any position. Sobrang galing si Fitch Arboleda as a utility player. And as you can see, he's also the captain of the team. So Arboleda giving some problems. So let's see how Ferrer will be able to adjust. Ferrer, a player who brings in that high energy, whether it be the finals or tight group stage game lang, syempre. Nano, but was sent back by Fofana, trying to use his trickery. Rota. For Saito. Former teammates, uh, Nano Amita and Paolo Bugas. Oh, they know their games pretty well. They're also from the same region. Also, we also got to see Coach Finn Santos of FEU, who's definitely proud of seeing his players graduate and play here. Nano, slowly but surely, but it was poked away. But it looks like it was Menzi who was fouled, or Menzi committed the foul, rather. A bit of a dangerous move there from Audi Menzi. You can take a look at that later. Nato Amina tried to weave his way into the Stavao defense. Medyo mataas yung contact na yun. And uh, Serge Kale was not happy with that. Having some words with Ricky Sendra. Itong si Re referee Meliton Pilayo. A former player as well a decade ago. One of uh, the fierce uh, strikers from the military groups. Of course, the military groups very hard-nosed with their all-out approach in games. You gotta love their passion, of course, and contribution to the game. This long ball was denied. Who will secure in the midfield? Now taking through. Kaole, the furthest Davao has gotten here. Oh, Dement is celebrating that tackle. Play continued now. Intercepted by Audi Menzi. And now a chance in the counter. You'll have to be careful here. Watara, calm and composed, getting out of his line. Ferrer, but Arboleda gets it. That's one of the brewing matchups dito ngayong gabi. Arboleda versus Ferrer. Oh, Arboleda has been winning 
on many occasions. Uh, Ferrer has to really keep, keep his head up talaga. Kasi ma mahirap mawala ng focus, lalo na sa final na to. Of course, again, you mentioned just slightest mistake and uh, you could just pay the price. Ferrer swarmed. Technically, he got past there. But this ball is up for grabs and Sendra did well. Got it over Daiso. Sendra. Looks like there's another gutsy slide from Villarreal. Kaole. Familiar territory. Davao Aguilas Umac going through him in the counter. What great patient play here. Numbers weren't in, in their favor. Dito naman daw sa kabila. Ferrer kay Bugas. Now in the middle. I believe this is Sapal. That is confirmed. Kaole. The Cameroonian. Contra Meliza. Meliza with the speed. It may favor him here. Let's see. Kaole pa rin. Still search Kaole. Trying to find Tuason. Send it low. Rota. Cleared it. Abusi also down to help the defense. And there is a foul committed in the process. Not a bad one if you ask me, delaying the counter of Ilo Ilo. Smart play from Troy Limbo. He was trying to pull down the shirt of Abusi. They were really on the final third ng Kaya defensive third. So, wala siyang choice dun kundi itigil yung play and delay the counter attack. So we got to mention earlier and run through the players who are absent for Davao Aguilas UMAC. For Kaya, on the other hand, it is Harvey Gayoso due to accumulation of yellow cards. So that's a big blow to Kaya, but they have the depth to make up, make up for it. The chance now on the further end, Daiso Parin. And from the looks of it, it went out already before he cut it back in hopes of finding a teammate. Well, that's what's difficult with watching against Daiso. You play against Daiso, you know, we see itong ating number eight, Jomari Sapal, Carta Larok. He just went through both the, uh, both uh, Davao Aguilas UMAC players. And that's how good he really is. He also scored a goal in uh, the AFC Champions League. So that, you know that his level is really there. Definitely, they have what it takes to compete with some of the finest in the Asian region. The Champions League again featuring the top 40 clubs in the entire Asia. Oh, so, it's it's uh, you know, almost 20 minutes and Davao are really holding on when everyone was expecting them to just roll over. They're really showing their quality at the moment. Amita hit the deck, but no call by the referee. Bugas assessing his options, exchanging touches with Limbo. Sapal, Tuaso, and a former Kaya man. Diagonal ball, red well by the defense. Now we see both these Davao trying to really set up, put the ball on the ground, try to find and build up on the plays against this Kaya defense. Medyo, na, na, nahihirapan pa sila na konti, but they're getting the rhythm uh, out of uh, getting more of the possession as well. Kasi alam naman natin, Kaya FC will try to break you and find ways around the, uh, the wing backs and the forwards. Long ball here. Abusi connecting. Denied at the bottom corner by Watara. Perfect positioning from the keeper. Straight forward for him. Dini Watara there. As we see, Abusi, uh, he really broke down against Fofana. Ito yung si Fofana kasi this is, uh, he was just put here uh, in place of Pete Forosuelo, who has been stellar for Davao Aguilas UMAC in this competition. But Fofana barely hanging on and this might be is a natural position for him. Fofana often used off the bench for them as there's this looping ball that goes out and about but again let's see if Fofana a substitute normally for Davo can nail it that will be 
the game of his life, <laughs> we can say. Well, this is the beauty of the cup final. Isang game lang tayo, one game to decide uh, all of it. So, uh, they have played really uh, stellar in this competition. They have done so much in the knockout stages. So, hindi na nila sasayangin to. They will bring everything that they can to make sure that they steal a win here and get the, the trophy, basically. And that can be, again, the magic of the cup, as they say in football. But Kaya again wanted to be straightforward. They are the favorite team. And you said, Ivan, an early goal will do it for them. Just in the first 25% of this game. And should this carry on, this will favor Davao Aguilas UMAC. But then again, let's see how it will develop. I had a conversation earlier with team manager uh, Jing Hamlang. And I did ask him, because they have a fixture in uh, AFC Champions League on Wednesday. I go, are you resting your players for the Champions League or are you going to go all in? They're going to go all in and more uh, in this final. They do want it so bad to finish this uh, this year on a, on a very high note for them. Uh, mind you that Kaya FC has won the second division earlier for the under-19. They have won the Women's League. They have won the PFL. This will be their ultimate sort of uh, four feet. <laughs> we could say yes. So they want that perfect record. So action in the midfield, Bugas with space to operate. Taking it from distance, but clearly not framed. But he is brewing with confidence with the way he has played this entire season. He also scored a rocket from the midfield again versus Cebu. Well, Paulo Bugas made a decision there. He did not see options on his either flanks. So pinitin na, tinira nila lang. And uh, unfortunately, it did not hit the target. Pero, you know... He, he made that decision and made it very well. So let's see what uh, where Davo Aguilas can go. So again, we have Kaya playing on Wednesday in the AFC Champions League. Dito, Sarizal Memorial Stadium. Also that day, PFL side Stalin Laguna will compete in their AFC Cup. Their last g game of the group stage. That will be at the Binyan Football Stadium. So... Do head over to the stadiums to support your local teams. Don't forget, on Thursday, my Cebu FC game in the AFC Cup also. So this match here marks the end of domestic football. But my international matches, ang mga club teams natin. So let's of course, or do take this chance to support local football before we all head over to the holiday break. Well, exciting times uh, upcoming for Philippines football. We have a new new president uh, and at the helm and uh, we do expect a lot of growth as well in league competition. More clubs probably joining next year as well. So stay tuned and keep supporting the team. At my corner kick, Ang Davao. But as we speak, both groups of course going at it driving their respective clubs on supporters for Kaya to the left of the grandstand supporters of Davao to the right and they could just make that slightest difference here that could help their team get to the trophy and it's driven in off the likes of Rota Arboleda cleared it a wasted opportunity there for Davao that Corner kick did not go where it was intended to. Kita nga natin. Limbo got it in the middle, but here's Kaya now on the counter. Sendra looking to find Bass. Watara confidently just charged off. He let it go out at my goal kick. Sila. Well, good intentions there from Ricky Sendra. He tried to pick off itong run in Justin Bass. The ball was just a bit too forward. You know, I've seen those these two players. They're great competitors. I see them fighting on the on the pitch as well because they're uh, in, in charge of the middle para sa kaya. But you know, that's that's how it is. And you know, that was a good pass earlier, but just a, a little bit too forward for Justin Bass. Brotherly love between the duo and Ricky Sandra, of course, means business. They want the win. Tawagan natin sa kanya the businessman. <laughs> Rota. The long ball in. Dong Villarreal got his head. Pass! But couldn't get it on target. But 
you were holding on to your seats there, regardless of side. Quite cheeky there, that attempt from Justin Bass. Tried to rip that, curl that volley somewhere in the either top corner. But, uh, it was a bit too far doon sa ating target. Dino Taro will take his time. Uh, he knows that you know, the longer that he can hold on to the ball, he can rest up some more, and preventing these Kaya onslaughts. Well, of course, time will tell. But it will be an endurance here. 90 long minutes as they found Abu C cleared well by Fofana. Fofana Johan again from Ivory Coast. Same with Dini Watara. So they are compatriots. That's a foul called on Nano Amita. Tried to control that ball with his hand. <laughs> it was a bit clear of a case of handball. We have seen some very interesting handballs in this <laughs> tournament also. As Kaole will try to hustle, but Saito just, just sent it to the mix. Uh, this uh, Akita Saito, that center back for KFC, he was out uh, early in this competition. He, he got injured just before he started the, in the AFC Champions League. So now he's uh, fully fit and already there for Kaya has been contributing heavily on their campaign. So play to be resumed off of Abu C. Daiso couldn't get it, but Nakai Nano Amita 2 1 1 against Nano. Got to shake him off. Daiso, a marked man. There was Sapal tracking down from defensive mid. Also part of his duties we could say so play stop for the moment Fofana trying to delay play again in this instance we'll try to ice the momentum of Kaya there and Nick, uh, second Nick, Nick Ferrer just killed that ball immediately it's those games of course doing everything they can to stun Kaya's momentum of course Kaya will do their part in hopes of denying Davao in getting their offense. Lalo na sa counter-attack, but as we speak, here's Kaole driving them on. Pero medyo na late ang mga kakampi niya. But pressure now. They get it. Kaole the strike! Denied by Kamarad. Fantastic hustle on the other end. That was the first clear chance of the match. Very dangerous for Davao Aguilas. No, this is a final, Claro. And as we can see here, Davao did not give up on that play. Serge Kaole hit that very strongly. Quincy Camarad with a wonderful, wonderful save there. No chance for any rebound. Things getting pretty heated on the pitch. Nano Amita getting a bit of a warning already after that foul. And that man on the other end, Duke helped Kaole keep the fighter alive was, of course, Paulo Bugas. No surprise there. Uh, kita natin ngayon, my set piece ang Davao. Driven in by Bugas. I think, I think they were asking for a handball, but for the moment, it's in their attacking end. Just picked up by Kamarad. Well, so far, the makeshift defense of Davao has held on. Kart Talarok, Talarok at right back and Johan, Fofana Johan at center back. No, alam naman natin malakas tong si Abu C, got the likes of Nano Amita and Daiso especially. But we haven't seen the ball really go to Daiso at the moment. Medyo preferred nila dumaan dito sa right, right hand side. And as we speak, they connect with Nano. Arboleda, pass. Lovely combinations. But they just ran into the defense. Rota. They got it to the middle. Off of Villarreal. Who will secure now as his ping pongs. Kaole has just tracked all the way down. Half an hour into this game already. It is the Copa Palino Alcantara 2023 finals. 
Kaya FC Iloilo are in their all-black uniforms playing left to right. Davao Aguilas UMAC starting a counter. Naka all-white po sila. Will they cross? As they wait for more teammates. The intention, I think, was for Ferrer Jr., but Kaya defense there well positioned and well drilled. Arboleda will spark their counter now. Quite a loose pass, but space their favorite Daiso. Justin Bass, Nano, Watara, Nano getting hit. No call by referee Militon Pelayo. Everybody from Kaya, the supporters, the team, livid, especially Coach Colum Curtis. We have to take a look here. Abbas put Nano through. Oh, clearly, that had contact there. I guess, from our standpoint, it is a penalty. But Meliton Pilayo did not give that call. And as we speak, my vantage point tayo dito, Ivan, as we have the replay for us. And we are situated much higher. Well, there's another look at what happened. And the slow motion just shows you the case. Unfortunately, you, have do, not, you do not have that option on the pitch. But um, Nano was really hit on, that, on the foot there. In any other game, that would have been a penalty. Unfortunately, not for today. Another view here from that side. I think the, the view of the referee was blocked by the standing uh, Karta Larok there. So, benefit of the doubt with the referee. Coaches livid on the sideline still. And Shepard, yung referee, naka ground level or eye level siya, just like the players. And if ever you see anyone signaling for VAR, wala po tayong VAR dito. We actually have the VAR machine in a hidden, <laughs> stashed away here in the Rizal Memorial Stadium for AFC use. But uh, unfortunately, uh, it's only for that. Just for AFC, yes, as that was brought in by the Confederation, I believe. Yes, so uh, let's see how Kaya recovers from that. They, they, they should have won that penalty, but unfortunately, the call stays on the pitch. And of course, you have to play to the whistle, whether it be a foul or a non-call. But here's a call now going Kaya's way, as they have a man who was clipped. And a little over 30 minutes already in this game. Thank you very much for tuning in. It's the Copa Paulino Alcantara 2023 Finals. This is Clara Manzano on call for this match alongside Ivan Gallares. And we are glad to have you with us. And you are catching this game on the Philippines Football League social media pages. Filipinas Live and One Sports Plus. Paki like, share, and subscribe at download ang ating app and support local football. It is still goalless here, Kaya FC dictating possession. Davo Aguilas Umac trying to pounce on the counter from time to time as this is offside against Kaya. Well, Kaya trying to break this high line itong Davo Aguilas Umac. You know, they have the personnel to do that, but. Um, Considering that hindi nakakapunta yung bola kay Daiso, I think they have to rethink whatever they're trying to do here. Because uh, Davao has been holding on very well. And I'd like to think they did go for Daiso sa start ng match, going for the left wing. And then afterwards, they started going to the middle with Justin Bass and Ricky Sendra. At sa kanan, behind the likes of Fitch Arboleda. Troy Limbo. Prevailing there. The ball over the top. They connect, but offside got done. Uh, Serge Kale was slightly ahead of the final defender nung pasa na yon. So it, for, for the people uh, watching football for the first time, we have a na offside, which is ang goal is pagandahin yung laro, uh, basically. And not allow na may, tumamba, may tao na tumatambay lang dun sa goal at kumuha ng bola. So, we like to build, uh, build up the play and, and uh, make sure that goals are scored right. 
As Nano got past one. Couldn't make it two and three. Abu C, just from miles out. Sandra, great switch. And they cross it into Kaya again. They have the height advantage, as you said, Ivan. Arboleda kay C. Abu C couldn't cut it back. Johan just got it out, but it's not out of the danger area per se. Rota. Contra Limbo. Bugas. Flicked it to Tuason. Right intentions to Limbo. He would have been on the clear in the midfield if they connected. But always a tough one to nail. Always a tough one to, to, to time. At least the attempt was there. Yannick Tuason wanted to swing that ball away. Now they have another chance to, to do that again. Yannick Tuason, I talked to him earlier. He had still has some uh, niggles there, here and there. Uh, not really 100%. Uh, for this entire tournament, but he's doing well holding on on that uh, attacking role for Davao Aguilas Yumak. And considering, of course, he hasn't been well this whole tournament, as Watara gets it, Tuasan has been, is the Davao leading scorer with five to his name, and he also has two assists. Troy Limbo, the man from Cagayan de Oro. Bugas the cross, Rota denied it. Arboleda, but here's Nano. May konting banggaan. Pero naka-adjust naman sila. Bit of a miscommunication there. Davao Aguilas really, really just growing into this match. Claro. As Ferrer just gets forward now. All the way from left back. The referee takes no interest in that collision. Orimenzi Meliza, an F another FEU connection here. Plenty of those here, regardless of team. A very, uh, a couple of, uh, I think three uh, yeah, collegiate MVPs on the, the current match right now. So it uh, should be an interesting proposition for the fans watching. And Paulo Bugas, Nano Amita, is giving it their all out there. And as we speak, Kaya just run into another Dava brick wall. Troy Limbo, the exchanging touches, the one-to-one, -one. try to shake off Saito. Saito, a little rattle there, got shaken up a bit, but you can't just floor a man like him. Uh, Saito, size advantage is, is really there, about four inches taller than uh, Troy Limbo, who is not small at all, by the way. That's just how tall Saito is. <laughs> The so, uh, Kamarad is shown play. Quincy Kamarad, one of the most experienced U23 players for the country. They go for Daiso. Daiso didn't get a great touch. Serge Kaole was able to change that up. Kaole has been putting in the work here. Now Every time they see Daiso, everyone just rushes onto him. Cartalaro has done... Uh very well so far. A makeshift right back. To then see Serge Kaolid dropping back all the way just to cover that Daiso onslaught. And it's a corner taken short. Daiso played it to Melisa. The cross. Ferrer Jr. got the touch. Abu C whipped it in. Sapal. Terbinalik kay C. C again, the man from Senegal. Arboleda. Diagonal ball. In the hand of Sidaizo, they were asking for a handball, no call. Rota! Denied by Watara! Desperately taken out by Karta Larok. The best chance of Kaya FC so far came in from the veteran. Simone Rota just hit this uh, stunner of a shot. Buti na lang andan si Dino Watara para pigilan. But still nil-nil. Will this connect? Mission accomplished there. Now, will they make the next one? Arboleda beating Limbo. Rota. Kaya fully utilizing every ounce of AFC Champions League experience. A loose pass. Ofana Johan. Again, the winner of this Copa. 
provided they have the appropriate license, will take part in the qualifying playoff. As Nano just gifted it. A tough situation there, the defense making him work. So again, the winner will play in the AFC Champions League 2 qualifying playoffs should they have the appropriate license. So of course, our AFC competitions, halos na rename we could say. So the AFC Cup will virtually become the AFC Champions League 2. And so throw in on the further end, Bas, the youth teammate of Kutsi Kamrad while go growing up in the Netherlands. A late whistle there for the foul as Nano Amito was decked and Dong Villarreal gets booked and he has had a busy evening. Enforcer duties, pwede natin sabihin. And uh, yeah, uh, when the referee saw that, that was clearly a hard foul on Dodong Villarreal. Clearly a yellow. Even uh, uh, before giving the card, he approached Dodong hey, and just said, hey, you had two earlier, this is the third one, that's your yellow already. So Dodong Villarreal must watch and must make sure that it does not go into a second yellow as well. So parang naka strike three na siya for the first yellow card. But referees will be more strict now kasi may isang warning na siya in the form of a yellow card. Nakasulat na siya dun sa notebook ni Meliton Pelayo. Some extra bumping and shoving here. Yung mga players din, may warning mula kay referee Meliton Pelayo. And similar to how we started the game, a set piece from the left, the header! And it is over the bar and no goal. That ball hitting the roof of the netting, courtesy of Ricky Sendra. Itong, uh, the businessman, Ricky Sendra, perfect positioning. Tried to glance it to the top corner, just a bit too much from Ricky Sendra. This uh, Argentinian journeyman has been around Asia as well. Last played in Singapore for Geylang. And Sandra has been around the Philippines for a considerable amount of time already. As we see our grandstand just filling up bit by bit throughout this match. Definitely more than 400 people or so in this game. We'll try to get a count later. Just doing a quick estimate. As play continues to be stopped, Dini Watara... Dini Watara is down, appears to be shaken up, stretching earlier. Oh, as you can see, typically the stretch for cramps. You think that might be early for cramps, don't you think? Or what's your take? But he's really struggling and in pain at the moment. Currently, siya talaga ang lifeline ng Davao at goal. So he's a warrior as well, so I'm pretty sure he will try to knock this out. Obviously, we have uh, about five minutes and change left in this first half. Well, so far, Davao has held on to the onslaught of Kaya. Kaya, you know, they just had a couple of chances to score. One from Rota, one from Sendra. Knocking really on the door. So, they're doing uh, what's in their playbook at the moment. Kaya needs to talk about it some more. Because uh, on the build-up, they were nahira talaga sila getting that uh, the usual possession and passing that they get to create the goals. Some promising combinations at first. Sandra now is the man who is decked. And we could say also, cutting game management sa ating clock. As we said again, Davao, we could say, you said, are the David. Kai in the form of Goliath. As there's a cross! Close again, but not quite. Abusi was knocking on the door again. Gigil lang gigil ang mga tao dito sa Rizal Memorial Stadium. You could see it in the reaction of Abusi. He knew he could have done so much better on that play. And obviously, he's one of the tallest players on the pitch, and especially on that uh, in front of goal. Could have been at least on target for this level. As this goal kick we can see will be a barometer for Watara. 
And now he is feeling. So three minutes of additional time as we confirmed. So well, quite some time here. Both teams will like to at least keep status quo. But if you could sneak in the goal, you'll definitely take it. I do expect Kaya to push on and pile on the pressure here. More talented team, but Dawa really fighting back at the moment. This ball taking a couple of or a number of bounces. Limbo contra Rota. They're at it again. Saito did well to move forward and get that ball to the attacking end. But Kaole is down. And as Davao regained possession. Call it down and it's Ferrer this time around on the left wing. Oh, call it not seen on the screen right now. It's uh, near the center circle. Right hand on the center circle. And both teams just... Oh, Nick Ferrer here was clipped on display. Before that was the moment where uh, Kaole appeared to get hit and was down in pain. Still arguing Serge Kaole on the hit. I think he got hit on, on the ice. Just taking his time now for Davao. They're trying to burn some of that as well. Because the longer it goes again where we are scoreless, it will favor them. Clearly, the underdogs are uh, Davao Aguilas, Siumac. Bugas resumes play. The probing ball. That's the opener. Yannick Tuason giving them the magic. In the second minute of additional time, he puts in goal number six in this campaign. Celebrations in the Davao Aguilas, Siumac half. Dini Watara bringing it out also. My oh my. What a, what a goal. Right at the death for Davao Aguilas. Glancing header from Yannick Tuason. Perfect positioning. Camera did not respond to that. And Davao are in the driver's seat in this 2023 Copa Paulino Alcantara Cup final. Yannick Tuason, one of the most experienced players in the domestic scene on the pitch, giving them the lead in style. And there's maybe about half a minute at the least before we get over to the halftime break. What a header. <laughs> I can tell you, that was a great header from the veteran in Yannick Tuason. Surely enough, Kai will put on the pressure here. Perfect place, perfect time, and just perfect execution. And that is the halftime whistle, ladies and gentlemen. Kaya FC, Ilo Ilo, nil. Davao Aguilas, UMAC, one behind that stunner of Yannick Tuason. And what a first half it has been, Ivan. Well, all eyes on Davao Aguilas. They have done very well in this first half. Followed their game plan, stuck to everything, even though they have two key defenders out. Yannick Tuason celebrating that last-minute goal in injury time. Kaya FC have a lot to talk about in this uh, in, in, at halftime. They do need to find a bit more space, try to build up on their attacks because they've been just settling for through balls and you know, long balls which is really not the Kaya way of doing things but Davao Aguilas on the front seat they have done very well to be in this position and of course done and dusted with the first 45 minutes and we'll have the much needed halftime break as we'll have second half action later on again it's the Copa Paulino Alcantara 2023 final
how some people live.
Close to concluding this halftime break in the Copa Paulino Alcantara 2023 final. And as we speak, it is Kaya FC, Ilo Ilo, Nil, Davao, Aguilas, Umac, one behind that fantastic goal from Yannick Tuason in additional time or in the first half. So what a game it has been. We saw Kaya dictating the tempo, but... Davao, Aguilas, Umac were there and bit by bit they just put their pieces together and voila, they have this 1-0 lead, Ivan. And uh, the response from Davao in this first half was great. Just going back to the earlier sequences of the match, Kaya was denied a penalty after that Nano Amita incursion in the box and uh, was fouled by Dino Atara, but they failed to respond um, as expected of them and Davao found that space near the end of extra time which allowed them to get a goal in this, uh, in this final match. We only have one match in this final for the Cup. And we do expect a lot of fireworks as we start the second half of the final of Copa Paulino Alcantara. Abu C will kick this one off for us as we are awaiting the signal. Davao Aguilas, Yumac in their all-white uniforms. Kaya FC, Ilo Ilo in there, all black. And we have the signal from referee Meliton Pelayo. And this is Claro Manzano on call for this match alongside Ivan Gallares. Thank you for tuning in to the Philippines Football League social media pages, at the Filipinas Live app, and One Sports Plus. It's great. We have a lot of platforms to catch the action. So download the app. Or do make sure to like and subscribe wherever you are tuning in. And we definitely have updated or contrasting agendas. Ngayong second half, Ivan. As Wason tried to get it over to Bogas. And quite a promising start if you ask me. Dito para sa Davao riding that momentum or wave. Dahil nakagol nga sila at the death in the first 45 minutes. Abusi combining with Nano. Cleared off. And it will stay with Kaya FC. Kaya, the most successful club in this tournament, picking up two titles already. That was in 2018 and in 2021. In 2018, they did square off with Davao. And that was sure a close knit affair as Jovin Bedik found the back of the net at the death in the 109th minute. Like extra time tayo nun. Just going back to this match, no substitutes introduced at halftime for either squads. And um, you know, coaches are really depending on their game plan. Kung ano yung naset nila para sa kanila mga first 11s. Kaya have a, a more concentrated look coming out of the dugout. They're more focused now. Davao eager to get one more to seal the deal here for them. And we see one of those chances developing. Limbo kay Tuason. Will Tuason make it a brace this evening? We'll find out, but in that spell, it was no good. Kaole. One player, of course, who has delivered for them. But there was no foul. Referee Militon Pelayo took no interest there. Sendra. Simone Rota. Rota with a hefty amount of caps with the Pascals or the Philippines national team. But it was repelled by Davao. Bugas. Trying to send it, but it was slightly off target from our angle, and Quincy Camera just made sure to get it. Well, just, just pulling back on what I said earlier, Mar Diano comes in for KFC, slotted at the right back in place of the captain. Now, Odi Menzi is captain is on duties for the team captain of this match. So let's see how Diano will be able to make an impact in this game. So everyone again here 
for Kaya. Or Kaya themselves will play in the AFC Champions League. Will they be able to extract every ounce of experience in hopes of sealing this game and the Copa? It is passed back to Quincy Camarad. And of course, if we are Davao, we can say Ang hinahabol nila ay insurance goal or ex an extra cushion. Because the next goal here, if, if it is Kaya, will be back on level terms. Oh, uh, co complexity, the complexion of the game can change with either goal. Now, should Davao make it get another, it will be awfully hard for Kaya to come back. But we know this team, uh, they're, they're just trying to do everything at this point. Um, a bit hasty sometimes in the first half on trying to, too, just too eager to get that goal. But ngayon, they earned another corner. And with their height advantage, maybe, just maybe, they could get something out of this. So Meliza will execute the corner for Kaya FC Ilo Ilo. Davao Aguilas Umac getting all field players back in hopes of assisting Dini Watara, their goalkeeper. And here is the cross. And it was sent over the bar. We saw it as off target from the get-go. Good call from the referee. The ball hit uh, Johan Fofana. Oh, and it went straight out. Now Daiso, again the danger man. You know how good he is. It's again six goals and 15 assists for Daiso in nine games, mind you. So here comes the delivery, header taken, and it's off target for them. A good idea there from Kaya. Tried to find Abu C on that far on that far post. Didn't get much contact, pero a good opportunity for Kaya FC Duilo. Earlier today, we also saw the final in Division Two of the PFF U19 Boys National Championship, the U19 team of Kaya FC. Defeated Palawan FA 7 0. That was the curtain racer here today at the Rizal Memorial Stadium. And a congratulations to them as they are promoted to the top tier of the U19 competitions. As this is in the mix. This ball quite loose, Kamrad. Who just sent it back but it is tracking down to get into his goalkeeper box. A Davao player down. Kaya opting to carry on. Nano. Sandra chipping it a bit. Ofana Johan sent it, sent it with that clearance. And there you go, play is stopped. We'll try to confirm who is that down player for them. I think it's Marvin Angeles who got that hit uh, from Ricky Sandra. This is an arm ex a hand extension by the Argentinian. Nothing really got play earlier. Uh, knowing Mari, he'll just pick himself up and try to get on with things. They have been doing very well so far as a unit. Itong Davao Aguilas Yumak. And Mari Angeles, as he is known, his twin brother Maru is with Kaya. But as we speak, Maru is still on the bench, an unused substitute for Kaya. Seven holdovers again for Ilo Ilo. From that 2018 squad that faced Davao five years ago. Oh, the Menzi was clipped on that occasion. Yes. Um, ball is with Kaya FC. And now, we've seen them try to unspool this Davao defense. So, even though it's a bit makeshift para sa Davao, they have really performed well. Oh, and some uh, on-court collision there between friends and former collegiate teammates. Audi Menzi was holding on to his knee for a bit. And they resume play. Saito, Rota. With their fans driving them on now. And it's another corner kick. They've had a great number of corners when we refer to Kaya dito ngayon. 
But again, the scoreboard still doesn't show it. Dabao, on the other hand, have been able to play defense. I think we could see for that back line. Lalo na dahil makeshift siya. This could potentially be the game of their lives. Kaya really has to deliver here. They are a goal down. They need to score. So here's the corner. This takes a couple of bounces in. Cleared off to no man's land. Quincy asking or looking for options. Diano again, as you mentioned, Ivan. The only substitute so far in this game who has been inserted. Odi contra Kaole. And this whistle goes in favor of Kaya. Little Chinese get up done, Mulakai Odi Menzi. Definitely unshaken from all the bumps he's been received. Oh, just uh, trying to get that uh, the pull from Serge Kaole. Also known as the Floyd Mayweather, of Floyd Mayweather of the Philippines. But the Terry Cruz may debate <laughs> nakikita natin sa social media. <laughs> Isang favorite din di, oh, ng ating Philippine football community. As it is with Daiso, we are expecting a right-footed delivery. And that's exactly what we get. The header again, sailing over the bar. From the looks of it, it was Abusi. Kaya FC really knocking on the door already. Abusi has to be a bit more precise there. He knows it. He felt that. And perfect connection there. A bit of a stretch as well for him. A really sizable crowd that we have at the moment. I think we, there's over a thousand uh, who came out to watch this final. Yeah, counting update as we got to survey the crowd a bit no halftime. And a chance just slicing through the middle. Limbo. Looks up to Lionel Messi and has been just channeling that part in him. They cut it back, but Quincy Camerad gets it again. He'll try to kickstart the Kaya offense, and it starts with him in transition. Dong Villarreal. Up against his former teammate again. Two former players for Laguna. And they get it over. Mari. Pero wala. Sendra. And we can see that sense of urgency. Dito para sa Iloilo. To play back. Paolo Bugas just tried to do one, but to Abdu Abu Siba there with a nutmeg but he's still a Kaya striker well, Thankfully for them, they still have possession It is them now who have been dictating the tempo of this game thanks to that confidence booster of a goal Limbo, playing a little narrow now There's Talarok, who's trying to overlap Quick passing from Kaya now. They get it to the middle. Just three players here up against about four. Watara off his line. And his heroics doing the job there. Good catch from Dini Watara. He saw that danger from either end. He had to go out immediately off his line to clear that. If not, it was si Abusi. Could have done a shot or could have swung it past Dais, who was largely available on that left hand side. Sendra. So again, this Wednesday at this very venue, Kaya will be playing their last match in the AFC Champions League group stage. This is was poked away, Davao getting forward quickly. Bugas, Troy Limbo, he switched over to the other end now. Sakaliwa, Tuason. Tuason with the cross. Saito denies it. Tuason again, the goal scorer here. Scoring late in added time so I think first half. And that just sent half of the Rizal Memorial Grandstand into an absolute frenzy. Well, let's see now how Kaya, favorites entering this match, will respond. 
Iloilo again or Kai FC finished as number one in Group A as it's Melisa up against Talarok. Daiso. There's Kaola just working double time now. Mari. But quick combinations from Iloilo. They couldn't get it to Daiso. Menzi. And they look to reset. The question here, potentially, will it be a slow burn for Kaya? Everything, pero wala silang goal. We will find out, I guess. Well, I can see that Kaya just trying to find out because oh, Davao has been mall marking their best players at the moment. Daizo, Abu C, and uh, it has been effective for them. So the onus is now dito sa midfield ng Kaya on how they kind of distribute and then split this defense apart. Kasi mostly nakita natin are, you know, we see just long balls and you know, attempts at uh, through balls which na nauhuli pa natin ng Davao Aguilas Umac. And now, more involvement from Daiso is appreciated from the KFC fans. They do want their star player to be involved some more and make something out of this, so, this final match. So it's a matter of finding ways to break that defense of theirs that is checking Daiso. That shows the respect that they have when you refer to Davao. And we had a long break heading into this final match again. Or you could say Kaya had the luxury of playing their Champions League matches. So, nandun pa rin yung timing nila, no? Pwede natin sabihin. For Davao, though, it's a double-edged sword. Do you enter this game well-rested but potentially rusty? And so far, that long break, we could say favored them. The whole time, you could say or argue, they were just I focusing on this game. I think they had the time to really study Etong Kaya FC and watching all of their AFC Champions League matches live and even uh, on TV. And uh, I was quite surprised nga yung timing nila, okay. Uh, I think they have, uh, they've had a couple of uh, tune-up matches here and there just to keep in step. Pero let's see in the dying minutes kung how long could Dava hold in Etong uh, very fit Kaya squad. It's moments like that, of course, where you separate the big, the big guns from everyone else. As it is with Watara. There again, the score in their favor. Trying to burn burn time off the clock. One thing Kaya FC could do actually, you know, they have a really deep bench at Kaya FC and they could maybe take advantage. The Davao Aguilas are only uh, have already utilized the deep bench nila with the absences of uh, OJ and itong si Pete Forosuelo. Now, Kaya FC could do a couple more substitutes to really change the complexion of the match given that uh, they need a goal to, to really get back in this in this game. Of course, they have the likes of Captain Jovin Bedik. And then sila Eric Giganto. There's Mardiano who was inserted already as we said, but the flow of the game still going in the way of the Aguilas. Kaole trying to shake and bake Melisa. I believe Melisa got a touch, but it eventually came off Serge Kaole. And there we go, Ivan off camera. Sang player na papasok is Robert Lopez Mendy. Close to the fourth official bench. They're just sorting his paperwork. And oh, he has 30 minutes to really do something and uh, get the goal here. Just to, just to tie, extend the game. To whatever. And Mendy can just ins just shake things up with his energy. He's that type of player you like to have up front as that target man. And he has that speed. They couldn't get this one to Justin Bass. Rota Diano. But it was picked out by the likes of Sapal. Mari Angeles he fell in the process, dueling with Nano Amita. Kai will try to unleash now. Daizori Koshi nasa gitna. Cleared up by Talarok. Talarok off any midfielder, but is playing right back again due to the absences that 
we mentioned earlier. We often see OJ Clarino in that position. Now let's see how many substitutions should come. I think there are three people on the sidelines warming up. We have uh, Marvin Angeles, Jovin Bedic, Kurt Dizon. Well, there's only one for Davao Aguilas, Yumak on the far end. It's actually too far for us to see at the moment. That's given the angle where our commentary box is situated. And back to the action. This sight of long ball unable to connect. It's back to the boots of Watara. Sending it to the corner. And we can say, you know, regular programming nila in this game, understandably. As Watara got dispossessed at, at bouncing the ball. Amita gets it back for him! Game on! Nano Amita, clever as he always is, was lurking behind Watara. I think Watara forgot that the veteran was behind. He took a bounce of the ball as goalkeepers do. Dispossessed. And this Nano Amita looped it into what was virtually an open net. Marvelous. Really great goal from Nano Amita. The, small and, the smallest man on the pitch showed his technique here. Picked out Johan Otara off his line up to the top corner. What a beauty, what an equalizer. A goal worthy for a final. Nano Amita getting goal number six in this Copa Palino Alcantara. Driving on the Kaya faithful here. Just what the doctor ordered, or just what Coach Colin Curtis ordered himself. And they have Robert Lopez Mendy, an attacking option, set to check in. So that could just be no looking back for them. That just defines experience from what we just witnessed. Well, Nano Anuita has, has done a lot of those from a long time ago. He got the ball clearly. No foul was incurred. And Robert Lopez Mendy warming up on the sidelines, getting ready to replace, I believe, would be Abu C. So, Paulo Bugas kicked this game off again for us. At Pwede nga natin sabihin para sa mga fans who are not familiar with football. Knockout play. <laughs> Literal na knockout play from Nano Amita. Na earlier, Curtis one was also supposed to go in. I guess it was for Nano Amita. But the substitution was waved off because of that goal. And momentum clearly on Nano's side. And the coach acknowledges that. Kaya nila tinuloy and keep him on the pitch. Nano just got himself clicking as this ball was overcooked. And of course, you just don't sub off your goal scorer as we often see in this game or in the sport. And in will come Robert Lopez Mendy. And from the looks of it, as you, or as you mentioned, it will be Abu C. Interesting proposition here. Robert Lopez Mendy, the veteran, going in at the forward role. Now Robert Lopez Mendy will take on the, the scoring chances here. Might be, might just have a winner for Kai FC down the road. Uh, Davao, what can they do? They need to pick themselves up really find a way to get through the Kaya backline. They have done it earlier. Cartalarok and Serge Kaole were not in tune there, so that is why possession goes back here. And Kaya, mind you, are the reigning champions of the Philippines Football League. And as you said, Ivan, they are going for trophy number four when we look at the entire scheme. There's the Copa, which they are gunning for. 
the Philippines Football League, which they won my U19 title, so Division Two, and they are also the Women's League champions. Oh, Daizo gingerly walking, looking at his coach. He thinks he's feeling something at the moment. Not a good sign for Kaya, especially on this crucial final 20 plus minutes left. So let's try to. Someone assess Daizo's condition. Will he soldier on if it is quite major or a bother? Or will they continue to unload the bench here? So we could say or the flow of this game has been somewhat similar to the start of the first half. Kaya FC dictating possession now. We're back on level terms. They got goal number two. Melisa did get that ball, pero offside daw ang tawag. Now clearly, Jess Melisa was just a foot front sa lahat ng defenders ng Davao. Some extra action after the whistle. You know, Mayweather action. <laughs> <Ika uli. laughs> and uh, Carta Larock, one of the standout players here um, in this match. Played spectacularly here at right back for Davao. He's really an attacking player, to be honest. Tama. But he has done so much on that defensive end. Both teams now with 20 minutes or so to make amends. So we did say no 1 0 on score. The next goal will be the most important one. If Davao scored, my cushion tayo. If Kaya did find the back of the net, which was what happened, we're back on level terms now. And we are just past the 70th minute of this game, and we're glad to have you with us for the broadcast of the Copa Paulino Alcantara 2023. This is Tara on call for this match alongside Ivan Gallares, and you are catching this live on the Philippines Football League social media pages, my Facebook and YouTube. You are also catching it on the Filipinas Live app and on One Sports Plus. And thank you very much for watching wherever you may be as they get this Kaole. Fantastic combinations from Davao. There was the challenge, and the linesman says it's a corner. I thought that goal was a goal kick. That uh, ball was a goal kick, but I think they are closer to the action than us. Of course, the referee's decision is what will stand. At wala tayong VAR, as we said earlier. The outswinger. It looks like Diano is the one who got that. But this shot out of the, outside of the box from Limbo was off target. Wasted opportunity there from Troy Limbo. He had a chance to volley that, but it went straight way off target. This goal kick of Quincy Camrad will be retaken as he took it and did not secure the ball in that small six yard box. Coach Colum Curtis was livid there. Signed the opportunity as there was Nano Amita was trying to pounce on that long ball. And that is where we find ourselves now. Possession up for dispute in the midfield. I think for me, the match has been pretty level so far. Both teams are still in a chess match in the midfield. ways. Two of the goals were from different build-ups. Justin Bass, Robert Lopez, Mendy! Looks like that was spoked by Fofana Johan. We thought it was goal bound for a moment until we saw it was off target. Could have been a disaster for Davao, but they just escaped. Now, Johan, almost a blush there. I mean, you cannot have uh, consecutive mistakes in this cup final, which will cost you dearly. But Kaya now a bit more hungry to get the winner here, as you see Daiso in the, on the corner plate. Daiso Horikoshi takes it. Got to find Mendy, but it was no good. Delivery was a bit too high for Robert Lopez Mendy. 
a winner also of this competition back in 2019. And he played uh, for Ceres Negros FC. And when we talk about Robert, Robert Lopez Mendy, he, he is a holdover from that 2018 winning team of Kaya. As there's this through ball, Quincy Camerad charged off his line and well. Got to deny Limbo. And it's Dyson now answering back on the other end. Also on the left wing, when the cross dealt with, he couldn't connect or place that into the boots or head of Lopez Mendy. And we just see how this match is open up. Back and forth action. Trying to test Cameron from distance. But it was just picked up routinely. Not yeah. ideal for Nick Ferrer to take that 30-yard uh, shot. Melissa Gaeta directly to Kaole. Kaole beat one. Almost made it two. Well, there was Audi Menzi. Again, he got the armband as Fitch Arboledo was subbed off this match in the halftime break. And we have two bench players for Kaya lining up and are set to check in. We'll get to that later on. Daizo up against Talarok. Lopez Mendy tried to back heal it. Executing that was spectacular. Connecting another story. And we'll have it right there in the middle at the half line. It is Maru Angeles and Marco Casambre checking in. Stepping off are Ricky Centra and Simone Rota. I think these are good substitutions for Kaya FC. Need additional stability there on the midfield. They haven't really performed as well as they want to in delivering the ball to their forwards. So now it will be up to Maru Angeles to dictate play in the midfield in hopes of getting a second goal for them this evening. Sapal. So we have our, br our battle of the Angeles Twins already going on in this game. Bugas. Angeles. And Kaya wins that ball as the possession really, the ball hit Bugas on its way out. Melisa taking down the line. Talarok gave it to the middle. It ping pongs. Bas sent this one looping over off the head of Dong Villarreal. Daizo. Throw in meant for Angeles, but it went to Villarreal. Lopez Mendy close, but not quite to getting it. Villarreal tried to spark a counter with the long ball. Hori Menzi with his physique. Is managing to retain possession up against Kaole. Mari Angeles, Troy Limbo. Kaole trying to go for Tuason. Tuason again, the man who found the back of the net for them in Davao Aguilas in the first half at the death. But we are one all in this game as there's a man down. That is why play is stopped. The man is off camera on the right side. So Yannick Tuason, he got into contact with that uh, clearance from uh, Marco Casambre. who's now introduced on that left-hand side. And speaking of Marco Casambre, also a very well-experienced player. They continue to flex the depth of theirs when we refer to Kaya but it is not often that we see teams replace members of their back line especially in a close game like this Limbo switched it up Ferrer Ferrer again just shy of the back post 
And that appeared to be inches away from glory and the potential go-ahead. Oh, Camerad was floored on his spot. Did not expect a shot from Nick Ferrer from that distance. Just hits the outside of that uh, far post. Just 10 minutes and change left, Claro. Both teams eager to get that go-ahead. Go-ahead winner. And Daiso was checked and Watara will reset. Okay, the game again opening up. They're asking for a handball as it went, came off of Bas. Maru Angeles couldn't find his teammate. Akito Saito off his line now. There's Ferrer in the middle trying to just take advantage of that. But Saito recovered. Oh, things getting scrappy already. Here in the final 10 minutes. Oh, it's still a chess match for both teams. Davao a bit more cleaner in finding their open man. Kaya immediately wants to release their players as early as possible to get that uh, speed advantage. And at the moment, off screen is Fofana Johan. So, Fofana Johan, off screen, preparing to get some treatment. And should we remain level after 90 minutes or regulation, we will have extra time, which will be two 15-minute halves. And if we are unable to get a winner from that extended time, we will head over to the penalty shootout, which is often, or which is a lottery by its nature of sorts. Well, for Fana Johan just finished his treatment. He could, well, Davao could not afford to lose him. His, he has been stellar in that makeshift center back position uh, for his club. No, no, really miss Pete Forosuelo in that position. But it is what it is. And also for Kaya missing. See Harvey also because of suspension. They do need his quality, especially after scoring again in the ACL in the last match. It is a grand feat in its own already. As Kayar just running through the right. The low cross in for Lopez Mendy. Sent out of the goalkeeper box of Watara. Davao trying to knock those combinations. Bugas was opting to play long, but picked up by his collegiate teammate. That was Ori Menzi. Now we see Kayat pushing it in all cylinders right now. Itong Davao, they, they have settled back a little bit, but still wary about that counter attack. Still, Davao is in a high line, trying to catch those. Uh, Kaya players on the wrong side. Well, just imagine if you know Dini Wata did not make that mistake on leaving Sinano Amita. But true enough, I think Kaya all deserved the goal already after uh, missing that penalty call earlier. Amita getting in contact on with Dini Watara in the box. And in turn, it was Amita who found the back of the net for them in the 65th minute. He got to sneak it past the defense. At my corner kick, Potayo lit. Kaya again. Bombarding Dava with corner after corner throughout the course of this match. But their goal has yet to come from that type of set piece. Or from set pieces. So will this be the chance? But before we get that corner kick, Serge Kawale will be needing some treatment. Kawale getting stretched out from what is potentially cramps. Well, they need him on the pitch. He has you know, produced on that right-hand side already. And you can feel the the pressure 
The bodily pressure coming in. Ito, ito, ito yung pinag-uusapan natin, yung fitness level. Skaya is up there. They have been playing consistently on the highest level. So we did expect that Daba would like go down in performance given that they haven't had a, a, a really uh, long match. Uh, it, it's been quite long since they had their full match. Maybe a month already. Daizo sends this in. It took a touch. And it looks like it's a corner again. So one after the other. So let's see how they will try to adjust their play here. Again, this is just one match for the Copa final. Watara appeared to punch it out. Corner kick ang tawag, pero sa kabila. And just switch to the other side. I can see Sir Chale is going back to the play now. Davao is complete. So Kaya tried to take advantage of that 11 v 10 situation. But now it's back on level terms. When you refer to the players on the pitch. Here comes the service. An in-swinger again. Watara didn't get a clear punch to it. Sent out from the likes of Cartalaro, it appears. But it's back in the goalkeeper area. Bass headed it. Saito. But there was a foul, I believe, for that high boot. No high boot from the Japanese defender was the offending act there. Well, we still see a lot of the fans egging their teams to get a goal here. Five minutes and change. Maybe a couple of minutes to be added on. Oh, surely that is a yellow for whoever did that. It's from the captain, Odi Menzi. And quite a late whistle, but referee Meliton Pelayo did see that infraction. Now, Richard Talarok is coming on. Coming on for Mari Angeles. Mari has done well in his shift in the midfield. Now we will see Kung uh, take a look again on that replay. It was Menzi who pulled. You see Troy Limbo. So a chance on a platter here. Will Davao get that lead back? Or will Kaya get the job done in defense and create a chance? Let's Bugas stepping up to the plate. Taken. And it goes over the bar. Well, I was quite surprised that he went uh, straight there. Like that Manhattan, there only like three players on the box for Davao. They did not expect to get the header in. Just a little safety first again. As they're facing a juggernaut. Bass in Saito. Trying to punch a hole through that defense. Oh, Bugas was dispossessed. There was another shirt pull from Menzi. Get it to Limbo. Limbo is just bothered by the bodies in front of him. And a chance now, Nano. Whether the goal will come from him or a teammate, he definitely does not mind. They just want to get that job done. Maru, but that ball was with um, Ferrer in the middle. With well, that loose touch from Kaya, gifts it to Watara. But. A non-ideal pass there. Just gifting possession back. You want to avoid those unforced errors. Daiso! Denied! But looks like that is no good because the flag is up for Robert Lopez Mendy. We saw it from the run already. Sabi ng ating linesman offside because he was behind the defenders of Davao. Part of how the offside works again. For the benefit of our 
friends who have just tuned in. And we'll try to get a closer look at that one. Now, this may of the Kaya, faithful here. There's a lot of them. Let's take a look. Now, that was already on the final one. We want to take the shot from Daiso, but we'll go back to that later. Not really controversial, but uh, he might have been behind at that uh, possession that the shot was taken. But the show goes on here. Richard Dalarok joining the fray. And defense. Two balls on the pitch. It has to be stopped. And again, the top team in this competition will be nominated to the qualifying playoff of the AFC Champions League 2, provided that they have the license. As they send this one in, Daiso, but it was no good from the get-go already. I'd expect a couple or maybe three minutes to be added on here. Confirmation in a few seconds. So seconds away now from additional time confirmation from our fourth official. And it is six minutes. Plenty of time for football. Well, given that Davao has a, you know, has pretty much used up uh, its, uh, its bench with the talented players. You know, if you do extend here, it will be advantage for Kaya. I think Davao should push for a winner here to make sure that they get a result out of this. So, of course, the agenda has changed with the way this match has gone on. So, again, one goal each. Davao Aguilas Yumak got the opener in added time in the first half. Kaya Iloilo equalized in the 65th minute behind Nano Amita's heroics. He just snuck behind goalkeeper Dini Watara. Poked the ball away as he bounced it. And Nano just sent it into the open goal. Using his ex experience to his advantage. Both teams... Playing ping pong. Daiso just running into Cartalarok. No ill, Ill intention there from Cart. Just had to do what they were what they were where they were placed. <laughs> it's an awkward bounce there for Davao defender. So Kaya have had a hefty number of corners. And now it's a free kick from the attacking half, quite far. They get it, but it is no good. Almost a another for the Sinano Amita. Shortest guy again, as you mentioned. Tallest on that uh, play. He timed that pretty well. Kata on lang na when this delivery was made, it's a little bit high. The guy from Davao de Oro. Um, the Amitas, of course, a footballing family. As Dong Villarreal gets this back into play. So again, it is a winner-take-all match for the Copa Paulino Alcantara 2023 final. Will it be Iloilo or Davao? And thank you again for tuning in here as Bass gets floored. And they will resume play close to the half line just inside the attacking half. Here comes the crowd. They outnumber Davao fans 3-1 to one here. Kai, of course, a founding member of the Philippines Football League and have been around as Robert Lopez Mendy gets it. That clearance from Talaro came off of him. It came off of Mendy. 
and appeared to be on target. Neosdini Watara was called to action desperately at the near post. Take a quick look at that. Oh. Naughty bounce there on the Lopez Mendy. Potential disaster was avoided. But this was cleared and given to Casambre. How will he re recycle for them? I think Coach Colum Curtis wanted a handball earlier, but no call. Try the other side, but they fail to connect. Well, that was uh, a bit too much from Marco Casambre. Tried to go wide that time. Surprising to me that at this point you try to go for long balls instead of setting it up with short passes. So less than two minutes until the sixth and supposed final minute of additional time. At this rate, we are set to head over to extra time, two 15-minute halves. As Nano got to shake off some defenders and create some space. But that shot was denied. Talarok. Tuason. But it was given to Amita. Thought about playing it wide. Amita getting clipped by Tuason. Both goal scorers of this final making contact there. Nano was smart enough to try to avoid that. But two, two professionals also who have been teammates at certain points of their respective careers. Oh, exactly. So it's Daizo again to step up to the plate. Will he propel them to glory? The three-man wall to beat and Dini Watara. Definitely a tough task. They climbed out of the 1-0 hole already. And will they take the lead? Bas couldn't get it. There was some chaos outside the six-yard box. The early cross. Daizo, the looping ball, but it was clearly overshot already. As we are hitting the sixth minute already. Now we go to a battle of attrition. Uh, especially going into the 30 minutes of extra time. No, Kaya has, you know, they have players already from the bench or fresher. Daba will need to dig really deep to maintain what they have done so far in the light last 90 minutes. And we can say Kaya have that advantage from what you mentioned. But referee will still give another spell at the least. Looks like Nano got this initially, but is being clamped down by the corner. And in Nano Amita fashion, he gets them a corner kick. He drew the best out of that situation. Safe to say it's the final, final play of regulation at the moment. Should Kaya get something out of this, they will win the cup. Should it not go anywhere, we go to extra time. So, hold on to your seats, ladies and gentlemen. Those in the live stream, do not leave. And let's watch this unfold now. The service overcooked. Bass couldn't keep it in play. And that is the whistle from referee Meliton Pelayo. We are tied after 90 minutes. Tied after regulation. But we will need to have a winner. We will have two more minutes of additional time. As we will try to get our winner here. And the winner of the Copa Paulino Alcantara 2023. A content reminder lang, should we be tied after the 2.15 minute periods, we will head over to penalty shootouts. And 90 minutes, Ivan, what will have to be your take? Well, uh, everything will change now because fitness levels will indicate really where... Uh, where the, both teams will go. Knowing Kaya, they are the fresher of both teams. And, uh, well, sorry, 
Davao is the pressure of both teams, but fitness is with Kaya. So at the moment, Kaya has the tools to really get something out of this. But in Davao Aguilas, UMAC fashion, we have been able, or they have been able to stun the crowd and take a 1-0 lead and push Kaya to the limit. And let's see how this will develop. They have an opportunity to regroup and get their huddles, but it is contrasting. We see Kaya's players hydrating, but for Davao, players are down on the pitch, getting stretched out in desperation. And that's just proof of what you mentioned, Ivan. Now, it's, it's, it's very uh, telling, you know. Kaya has a bit of the momentum after getting an equalizer from Nano Amita. Dava could have that perfect ending if they did not concede with that goal. So, uh, a little bit of a stretch for most of the players, but this is a final. You have to push yourselves to the limit. Make sure that you get every ounce of performance from, from yourself. Uh, you know, these, these players, they want to win titles. It's very hard to do at the moment, but no, they have to will on and get a result from this. Players, of course, are just able to find that second wind or that fifth gear when they think that they've given their all because when they entered this match, they were just 90 minutes away from sealing a title and they just do not want to let the title slip out of their sights. And that is why we have gotten this massive showdown right here at the Rizal Memorial Stadium. And thank you very much again to our viewers for tuning in wherever you may be or whatever platform you are streaming this match on. Whether it be the Philippines Football League social media pages, my Facebook at YouTube. There's the Filipinas Live app, so don't you forget to download that also. And the One, and one Sports Plus, of course as we are nearing already the end of this transition and one potential player who will check in is Kurt Dizon we see paperwork being sorted out he's one of those players active in that Kaya technical area and as opposed to the end of Davao Aguilas UMAC Looks like we will have no changes, but let's see how it will develop. They are desperately stretching their players again. And the only rest their players have gotten is halftime, which is just a mere 15 minutes. Yep, and immediately we will resume in uh, a minute or so. Uh, not so much uh, separation from, from uh, the regulation time. We do expect players to be on the pitch soon. As we continue this coverage for Copa Paulino Alcantara. Well, thank you everyone for joining us in this extended final. So whoever gets a goal here or maybe wins the penalty shootout can actually claim the title. But as we see Kurt Dizon already on the pitch. Getting encouragement from teammates. Kurt, one of those uh, game changers on the bench. He incurred a injury earlier this match. So he's fully rehabilitated already. And Kurt Dizon also missed a, a number of games and just came on the bench midway through this tournament. And he could be one of those golden boys to just put Kaya back on. And again for Davao, all of their players have been in this game or their key players have been inserted. No OJ Clarino, no Pete Forosuelo, starting 11, norm, usual starting 11 players. There's no Hakim Dalam who was an attacking player that they would bring off the bench from time to time. For Kaya, as we said earlier, there's no Harvey Gayoso due to yellow card accumulation since he picked up a number of yellow cards already. 
that has led to his suspension. Unfortunately, it is for the final. But teams wrapping up their huddles already. And we're close. This is where legends are made. Exactly setting up this uh, extra final that we have for us. Kurt Dizon coming in for Nano Amita, the goal scorer. Uh, might be on that right-hand side. Kurt Dizon is a left-footed player. So we do expect some incursions on that flank. The depth of Kaya is really the advantage here. But the fighting spirit of Davao is there to counter that. And that's what's been keeping them in this game. And again, we are one all as Yannick Tuason gave us the opener. As Robert Lopez Mendy kicked this game or the kicked off extra time. So Yannick Tuason had his goal again late in the first half. Nano Amita equalized in the 65th minute. And these players just seem to be rejuvenated. Well, let's see, for how long will that last as they have already been pushed to their limits? And it's now on the further end. Lopez Mendy. Being hounded by uh, Richard Talarok, elder brother of Kart Talarok. So it's a corner again. But again, Kaya have not been able to convert in those scenarios. It was their trickery or hustle of sorts that got them that goal. As Nanomita snuck behind the keeper, Dini Watara, to get possession and send the ball to an open goal. Nakao playing ang sabi natin kanina in Pinoy definition. It's Melisa again. Let's see how Davao will potentially hold on or will Kaya prevail. Bugas contra Angeles. Bas kept it in as it was close but it was given to their counterparts. Nakay talarok pa rin. Cart to be exact. Sapal, Kaole. Promising spell. Tuason. Not sure if you're seeing Davao Aguilas or FC Barcelona. Eh, claro. Medyo naduling ako dun from that fantastic <laughs> fantastic um, spell. Oh, they do like that possession game. Try to you know, really pick out the opponent, itong uh, Davao Aguilas UMAC team. You have the likes of Troy Limbo, Paolo Bugas, Mari Angeles, Cartalaro. They like to play it on the pitch, then build from everything. There was that cross sent back to its origin. And of course, there's that influence from their head coach, Aber John Rusgal. Who is also an instructor in the PFF, in the different levels of the PFF certifications or coaching badges? Uh, Coach Abel has definitely shown his true quality in this competition. He has reached the final, had famous victories against the likes of Dynamic Herb Cebu, which is a very strong team nonetheless. In one of their games also, they went toe-to-toe -to -toe immediately with Philippines Football League side Benjola FC, 1991. But when there is Kaya again, they are undefeated in this competition. And when we say undefeated, that is nine wins in as many games as they're getting into the area. Villarreal got his boot to it. It is outside Corner again. And that has been the script here. It's corner after corner from Kaya. Some counters. Tito mula sa Davao, Aguilas, Yumak. But we haven't been able to get that potential go-ahead from either squad. 
Oh, we also did see earlier that si Mardiano, he like he rolled over like ten times on the side of the pitch. I hope he's okay though, but Curtis on stepping in. Trying to make that magic work again. The shot taken by Angeles. Some promising control. That ball quite wide, but they got it to dip below that crossbar. No, alam naman natin itong si Curtison. I actually thought that he would try to sneak the ball into the far post, pero he opted for a pass instead. Dini Watara, the goalkeeper, could not kick anymore. We did see itong si uh, no, number one DK is Kenneth Gobalio already warming up for Davao UMAC team. So we should see how long could they uh, really stay in this battle of attrition of both teams in the final. So this one going back and forth now. It's with Davao for the moment. Playing it over to Kaole. Quincy Kamrad off his line. Great touch from Kamrad. Got that ball off the bounce. And Melisa gave it over to Daiso. Daiso beat Pofana. Daiso pa rin. But denied by the same man. Justin Bass got it off the rebound. Takes it. And Fofana Johan again. Kaya pleading for a handball. But Fofana Johan, the man from Ivory Coast. I think we need to take a look at that replay. Unfortunately for us, our view, someone is blocking Johan's contact with the ball. But oh. Coach Curtis asking for a penalty. Johan staying down, complaining of hamstring pull. Let's take a look. You be the judge. The bass rebound. Yeah, it it was handball. His arm was stuck out, not, but was in a sort of natural position as well. So it is the decision of the referee. But there is no penalty. A second call that was uh, denied Kaya of that in this match. There was one call again in the first half for the benefit of those who just tuned in where Nano Amita was heavily hit. And Kaya were pleading for a penalty, but that was not the case. As the referee took no interest in calling one there or calling a penalty but with this now when we go back to the action I believe it's a corner kick to resume things uh, Johan I have to soldier on here 30 minutes left and Either again we could uh, complain of the pain or just go for glory either way he needs to be on that pitch as soon as possible Will be a big blow, and right now, because you said that Davao Aguilas UMAC are down to 10 men. Because, and if you said Fofano will have to soldier on, that is the ideal scenario. And if he does that and they get the result, that will be the game of his life again, along with those in Davao. But for Kaya, they have been sniffing blood, but haven't been able to convert in hopes of getting that go-ahead. Daiso sends it in. No teammate to meet it again. No friendly. But it's a corner on the other side. Davao just desperate to hang on. Oh, Jovin Bedek doing captain duties on the sidelines. Clapping on his team to get a goal here. So another corner, Kaya with a one-man advantage. Saito couldn't get it desperately. Wonderful, wonderful clearance from Dodong Villarreal. Here's Odimensi, he is onside. And they're just putting the clamps on him. Looks like that was quite a miss kick from Sapal. That didn't seem like his intention. He would have liked to cover some ground going down the attacking end. They go for Robert Lopez-Mendy with the advantage in physique. 
But Davao get it and they try to unleash on the counter. But Talarok was beaten. There's the initiative, Bas. Would have liked to take it a little quicker. Well, there was traffic in the way of Mendy. But Daiso wins it! On the overplayed pass to, to Robert Lopez Mendy. But Watara again continues to be a busy man. Six minutes remaining in the first half of extra time. Now we see Johan back in play, which keeps the back line of Davao Aguilas intact. Kaya just throwing everything forward here. It's been wave after wave. Came off a defender of the Aguilas. And there you go again. The same ebb and flow in this game. Will Kaya finally get that in their perspective? Or is it that slow burn of being unable to find goal number two? Or will Davao hold on? Oh, Menzi made contact with that. It's a goal kick. Oh, the Menzi, uh, one of the notables here, has been performing very well recently. He even starred for the Ascals in uh, the previous camps. Oh, he has surely even scored against Kyrgyzstan on a training match as well. So Menzi carrying over that performance here in this Copa match. Kaya, one of the local teams, that contributes a great number of players to the national team. As it is one, Daiso still dribbling in. Will he find it? Denied again by Watara. Justin Bass was furious as he was open on the other side of the goal. But Bogas using his trickery in hopes of getting forward. He got it back from Tuason. There was that challenge from behind. Molakai Maru Angeles. Oh, Bugas just bossing around here. It's really showing. You know, he has been gone from the from the stage for quite a while. And he's just again showing his quality. Largely unnoticed again. But Anjan Paren, Magaling Paren, si Paolo Bugas. And before the return of Davao Aguila Sumac and of Paulo Bugas to the scene, there was clamor from Philippine football fans looking for him, saying that it is criminal that he is not playing in the top stage, whether it be in the Copa or the Philippines Football League. So in his return, it's a chance already to win the trophy. Robert Lopez Mendy got to break free. Still taking it up on his own. A challenge from behind. And it was won by Kart Talarok. Well, clearly, Kaya has the speed advantage at the moment. With the fresh legs. Mendy tried to send it back. Bas couldn't control. Taken, it came off Villarreal. I believe it was Maru Angeles who took that. Melisa. Now the throw in. Bas contra Tuason. Getting tangled up. You see the sportsmanship despite of them being in the heart of the battle. Saito. Kaya getting all players in the attacking half. Binelek dito kay Saito. A defender. Getting forward now. Menzi. Robert Lopez Mendy. He's still with him as he got it from Diano. Dava will try to unleash themselves now. Less than two minutes in the first half of extra time. And it's mainly traffic again from right to left. Very little attacking from Davao. Melisa, will he get it? Got to beat Kaole. Bas. Being forced to send it back. Menzi going for Melisa. When he saw that was out of reach already. 
on the about players just trying to manage everything here that they can. See Serge Chauli on the pitch, grimacing in pain. Ito si Fofana Johan also clutching on the top right side of your screens. Has been feeding his hamstrings already. Dini Watara, the goalkeeper, could not kick a ball for his life at all. So I'm pretty sure he will not be. He might not be playing if this uh, match goes into a penalty shootout. And this is a challenge for Davao Aguilas Suma. Coach Aber shouting instructions on the sidelines. Just trying his best to manage it on this level. Talking to Bugas and Troy Limbo. And when you refer to Dini Watara being unable to kick a ball per se, it's because worst case scenario in a penalty shootout, the goalkeepers get involved also. And uh, might need to be more uh, quicker to, to jump on either side. And right now it's just purely just energy is flowing out in this final. So two minutes of additional time as our fourth official confirmed. And Davao taking their time in getting this back into play. Oh, the, their defense has been stellar. Uh, losing your two starters at the back would be certain death, but they have made leaps and bounds. They have perfect strides to get to this level. And uh, the, the defense ha hasn't really, the back line hasn't really made a mistake so far. That's right, when we talk about the nature of Amita's goal, but Kaya get deep again. Punched away. Justin Bass sends it to the sky and almost out of the stadium. You know, he looks tired. Uh, Justin Bass and Sandra were having some difficulties in the midfield today. But this was a good chance. Mardiano just walking past those defenders. Punch went straight to Bass, tried to volley that, but goes just over. Medyo pagod na at this point siguro. Diano slightly fresh as he came on in the 4th to 5th minute. Well, in the start of the second half. And Serge Kowale is about to return. As Dava have been down to 10 men. That's also been part of the story for them in this game. Once again, they've already had to bring out their bench of sorts because there's no OJ Clarino and Pete Forosuelo but that is the whistle to end the first half of extra time 105 minutes done and dusted and we are still unable to separate these two teams so we'll have another water break for the squads and they'll switch sides at my final stretch tie of play whether the teams will be able to find the back of the net or not because should we remain level after the next 15 minutes Ivan it will be a penalty shootout it has been evident in the first half of extra time that Kaya had the fresher legs you know produced so many corners in that uh, first half now they just couldn't really convert Davao defense really standing strong kudos to them they have outperformed all expectations especially with Fofana and Talarok and Dodong Villarreal Nick Ferrer getting part being part of that also Richard Talarok supporting them on a midfield role Oh, hats off to Dava. Whatever happens, they have played a great final already. But both teams can still win it. I do expect them to give it their all. 15 minutes and a potential penalty shootout. 
is what separates these two teams from glory. Kaya again, as we labeled, are the Goliath here. Davao Aguilas, Umac, David. Or should they spring an upset? Cinderella would continue to dance of sorts here and continue that fairy tale run. So it has been a grueling match for the two players and we're glad to have you with us again. So it is now Davao Aguilas Umac playing from right to left. Kaya FC Iloilo playing from left to right. Kaya in their all black. Davao, the Aguilas in all white. And this is Clara Manzano on call for this match alongside Ivan Gallares. You are catching this match live on the PFL social media pages. Also the Pilipinas live app and on One Sports Plus. A good evening to you at maraming salamat po sa inyong support. Ah. Support local football as we end the domestic calendar. But don't you forget, as Bas takes this, deny it again. What do you have to do to get past Watara? It's been a lot. It's been a lot for Justin Bass. That was a great shot. When he got the ball dead center turned and put that to the bottom. Watara was there to keep it away. From the former Askas man. Taken. Counting Gulosa box. But there is a foul against Ilo Ilo. So Dava will get to roll the dice. But Watara is down. Now try to pick himself up from this. It, but this kick will have to be retaken. Some nerves, some initiative, and hoping to pull off a fast one. Oh, they'll, try, they'll try every trick in the book at this point. No, next goal wins basically. Parang playground rules lang. <laughs> next to score wins. Nice. Excruciating Next. battle of attrition Dito sa Rizal Memorial, claro. Next goal wins the game and of course you get the trophy, the Copa Paulino Alcantara. This is the finals already. Both teams had to weather the group stage. As Daiso gets it, was floored, cleared off. Kaya begging for another penalty. Where is the third time they are begging for a penalty? I don't think that one was a penalty though. Mm -hmm. He would try to lunge on the ball when he had no control. So clearly that is not. And another call here, I think collision for both players through the knee. And it is Richard Talarok and Robert Lopez Mendy. Both players were substitutes. Ito ang nangyari. Well, an extension, I don't know how to define that, but going for the ball, we can say. The contact was just there. One Kaya player is down at the far end. And he's definitely shaken up. But after we sort out that man or attend to that man who is down, Jovin Bedik will enter the game. The man again who scored at the death for Kaya. In, the, in route to the 2018 Copa Palino Alcantara. Where a Kaya defeated Davao Aguilas then. Fast forward to where we are today in 2023. Of the same tournament. Two teams again squaring off. Davao Aguilas making a return. Kaya with seven holdovers from that squad to win the inaugural Copa. A bit of a shift in the tactics here. Bedik is going up top. I think it was uh, Jan Jan Melissa who went off on that side there. Yes. 
Going for Kaole. It was three on two. Saito. Shoulder to shoulder contact. Tuason. Saito again, the Japanese defender. Got it over. To his compatriot Daiso. Close call there. Fofana Johan got his boot to it. But there was tension in the air to see if that would become an own goal. At some point, everyone was like waiting it to sail at the back of the net. But true enough, Johan did his duty to get that ball out from danger. And it's the Daiso out swinger. Most of Kaya's corner kicks have been in swingers. Balls that would curve towards the goalkeeper. They tried to take that quickly, but Kaya deemed to get an advantage from advancing through the sideline. But this one was no good. I think it was a foul throw on that far end. Oh, it's just a retake for Kaya FC. As they were in an advanced position, even in the retake. So this is the second retake. Ah, mukha naging foul throw. <laughs> Interesting times for us here in the second half of this uh, extra time. So whatever happened there between Daiso and Watara was already no good. That's why everyone froze. Foul on Troy Limbo against Saito. So about nine minutes remaining until the penalty shootout unless someone here could break the deadlock. Yannick Tuason again, the scorer for Davawagilas Umac. And it was Nano Amita who leveled terms and got Kaya back into the game. Again, it, you could say it is Davao, a guest team, playing here as they are making their return. A non PFL squad for the moment, but they have shown their intent to participate in the upcoming Philippines Football League. As this bounces around, Tuason got it over now. Bugas Limbo did well also to avoid him. A back heel from Ferrer, Troy Limbo. Well, that pass unsuccessful. Maro Angeles, Lopez Mendy versus Fofana Johan. Got past one man, was clipped. But a foul according to the linesman. A good foul, perhaps. I think uh, he could cut the antics now. He did pull. <laughs> in front of a thousand, a thousand people here, the leg of Robert Lopez Mendy, but yeah, he will get booked. But here you go. I mean, that that will uh, be viral for some reason. Just we'll see in a, a couple of days. But hand pull. <laughs> <laughs> he did not clip him with his boot while trying to get the ball. Fofana Johan grab Robert Lopez Mendy. With his hand. I think Davao should not make a wall here anymore. Okay, that's still a couple of players just to slow that down. Safety first. Everyone in Kaya is up there. Save for Marco Casambre. Casambre is well in the midfield. And it's Daiso again. The Kaya faithful driving him on. Sends it in. Watara appeared to just get his gloves to it. And it's a foot race over to the other end. About seven minutes remaining or six. And it's offside. Kaya getting their back line right on time. Since earlier their attacking players were past the half line. Walang offside dun in that situation. And uh, everyone just... Oh, Kaya FC now trying to stretch this ragged crew of uh, Davao to their limit. Daiso 
again. Robert Lopez Mendy couldn't control it. Dizon. Just imposing himself with his fresh legs. Bastu Casambre. The early cross. Diano got to meet it. But Diano down. Oh, he thought he had it, but just felt frustrated after that delivery. Casambre with that left footed cross. Could have, he could have made contact, pass it to Jobin, or even shot it for himself. Frustration kicking in for Mardiano and all other players on the pitch. This bounces around. Was desperately sent forward. And there's this dispute in the midfield. And it's a foul in favor of Davao, they played quickly. But this will be retaken. A goal scorer. And it's Yannick Twasson. And he oh, was fouled out location. He now just trying to slow down the pace again. I mean, four maybe three, four minutes left in this match. Uh, Dodong tried a cheeky one for 50 yards. Trying to channel his inner Paolo Bugas. Great control there from Kaya. Just displaying their technical ability. Taizo. Watara again. Should they come out on top? Dini Watara one of the candidates for man of the match. And he has been that cornerstone again, as we said, throughout this entire campaign for them. We did note again one concern was Davo could possibly be rusty. And Watara initially featured for Mendiola. Less than three minutes remaining, a foul throw was called against the Aguilas. But this was intercepted by Ferrer from the looks of it. Kaya wanted a handball. No call by the referee. Kaole. Intercepted by Saito. Intent, the intention was to get it to Bugas. But the Kaya numbers just got the job done. Diano, Bedik, trying to make a run. In the process, that ball poked away. Was poked away by Davao, and there is a corner again. Daiso taking on the duties. He wants to create this possession. Everyone going back. Nick Ferrer limping back to the, the halfway line. Almost everything has been thrown already. I say almost everything because the keeper's not getting involved for obvious reasons. Given the scoreline, we are level. Dabao is just trying to stretch this as much as they can. Less than two minutes remaining. And at this rate, we will have a penalty shootout to determine the winner. Whoever will come out after five kicks We'll determine the winner should that happen. But here's Kaya now. A minute and 15 seconds. Diano. But just routinely picked up by Watara. Not enough to bother him right there. Omar Diano tried to sneak, sneak that one in. So it had a nice curve to it going to the first post. 56 seconds remaining. Bugas, Limbo, Ferrer. It looks like Davao will be putting in a player potentially for the penalty shootout already. But Tuwason lost his footing and lost the ball, but Dizon just sliced the defense. 
Rosero's half cleared. Creeping in now. A chance. He's on. But it hits the roof of the goal. It's no good. But it's a corner. Someone from Davao managed to desperately get in the way. So three minutes. Axel Andres waiting to come in. He's being held back for the moment. So here comes the delivery. Looks like Diano got it. A shot taken. On target, but it couldn't get past Watara, who has been a massive brick wall. I believe he, he deserves a statue already after playing in this match. Dini Watara, out of this world experience. As we take a look at that shot, man. Deflection here, deflection there, but it, he's just a magnet for footballs at the moment, Dini Watara. He has that gravitational pull and just gets the ball into his gloves. Oh, Andres, this is a midfielder now, has the responsibility to mark that right left hand right hand side of Kaya. So potentially a change maybe. Anticipating a penalty shootout. So two minutes already of additional time in the second half of extra time. So there's a warning already here for delay for delaying the game. It's back in play. Saito won this one. Dizon. Now it's the left wing. Sir Dizos opted to operate as he sends it in. Off the one work of Watara. But it went to the boots of Andres. And desperately sent it out. It's unreal. What a cross from Dizo. Great header from Bedding. That ball just curled down. Andres at the right place at the right time to keep the score intact. Everyone in the stadium is on their feet. And that's his first touch of the game, or it has to be. Another corner. Angeles denied. This rolls out. Pass from the looks of it gets a throw in. I think he'll try to take it long. Jobin. Is sent to safety. Oh, speaking of long, Haley Long is in the audience right now. So also, yes. The Kaya FC women's team. And that is the whistle here to end the second half of extra time. Yes, we are going to penalties. And it's anybody's ball game at this time, Claro. I have, I have no idea on how this will go, but... I'm struggling to describe this, but we're getting goosebumps with the way this game has just gone the distance. They gave everything here, whether it be Kai FC Iloilo or Dabao Aguilas UMAC. Coach Colum Curtis and his coaching expertise, Coach Aber Rosgal, and bringing out all the tricks in the book, we could say. But it all boils down to a penalty shootout. And I think the only one who will enjoy a penalty shootout would be the neutrals. Shempe na stress yung mga supporters here. Because the it's a lottery as I've said throughout this game. Well, again, thank you for everyone who has uh, extended their time to watch this final. True enough, it has been a classic so far. And everyone who has been watching, they have enjoyed this a lot. Now... Onus will be on goalkeepers. Kamerad, Watara. Watara has been splendid in the entire time. Kamerad, less challenged as, as his uh, counterpart. But now, 
Oh. Who will be the first five kickers for either team? Dabao, you could fairly say it would be Bugas, Kaole, Troy Limbo, we could Carl Talarok. We could raise questions about Tuason with the way he was moving at the end of this game. Th that too. Um, Kaya, a lot of weapons in front. Justin Bass, Bedic, of course. There's Daiso. Daiso. Kurt Dizon, and Robert Lopez Mendy. Well, Mendy more of a player they used to utilize his speed. But such a technical and stack team. Well, Davao has really uh, performed and went to the next level in this performance. Kaya was frustrated, was denied. I think a couple of penalties during regulation. Coach Colum Curtis uh, trying to egg his team on. And when we talk about it, again, a potential qualifying playoff spot in the AFC Champions League 2 is up for grabs for the te best team with the appropriate license. So after this uh, match, we will have the awarding ceremonies as well. So please stay tuned if you are interested in that. At least 10 spot kicks at the moment. It seems that Dini Watara will, will play in between the posts. We did see their reserve goalkeeper in Kenneth Gubalio warming up earlier. But it seems that Watara is going to finish what he has already started. And given his fine form in this game also. Well, exactly. That's, that's what you want. Kaya now on their huddle as well. Coach Aber, as you can see, uh, he has coached this team far into expectations. He has really shown if there was an award for coach of the tournament, it would be his already. And just to even justify that, Davao Aguilas also escaped the group of death. Although they were not the top seed, it, they needed some results to go their way, but performance-wise, they somewhat justified it that they belong. There's Haiti Long. And if they pull it off, it will be trophy number four to Kaya FC this calendar year. A virtual sweep. So teams lining up. And again, this is Clara Manzano on call for this match alongside Ivan Gallares. You are catching this on the PFL social media pages. Also, the Filipinas live app and on One Sports Plus. Thank you very much for watching wherever you may be as we are going or about to conclude domestic competition right here. Two teams remain, and there can only be one. Only one will emerge as the victor in the finals of the Copa Paulino Alcantara 2023. It all boils down to penalty shootouts or spot kicks. And we could just feel the tension rising in the air. And we didn't think that it could get even higher with the way Davao held on by the skin of their teeth. Well, Kaya tried to play every book, every bring everything out of their book offensively. But with this match again, or how this match went on for those who just tuned in, Yannick Twasen gave the opener in the death of added time in the first half. A sensational goal from Twasen, the leading scorer of Davao, found the sixth of the season. But there was Nano Amita as Kaya refused to wilt. Nano with his heart, hustle, and trickery. This possessed Dini Watara to find the back of the net and sent the ball into an open goal. But we've been or we've gone through everything. 90 minutes, extra time, and that's two halves. 
and it's here now. Quincy Camarad and Dini Watara could just prove to be the difference here. And the first kick will be with Davao Aguilas UMAC. It is Paulo Bugas. Again, the team with the higher score, we could say after five attempts, will get it. Anticipation, tension in the air. Bugas versus Camarad. The whistle has been blown. Sends it in, top corner, world-class finish. Great shot for Paulo Bugas. No chance for Camarad to get that. This is the true quality of this homegrown player, which sets the tone para dito sa Davao Aguilas. And let's take a, another look. Oh, straight through the top corner. No chance. Not even Ter Stegen could have get it, gotten that ball. The cheers, the jeers. Whose side are you on here? That's all flooding the area. It is Watara versus Robert Lopez Mendy. They want to end this first set of sorts. One all, oh, but that is not the case. Heroics from Watara. Robert Lopez Mendy took that low. What a save. What a save. Didi Watara goes to his right, guessed correctly. Ball hit the post after he pumped it wide. Now Davao is in the driver's seat. And Yannick Tuason up next. So it will be up to Quincy Camarad to play those mind games in hopes of getting them potentially on level terms. Quickly taken by Tuason and denied by Camarad. Great save as well. What a response from the KFC keeper. True enough, Yannick wound up. But was found wanting. Quincy guessed right, and his reflexes and grip seem to be enough. And it's Jovin Bedik. Will he provide again in a crucial moment like this? It's rough moments for both teams, stressful moments, but again, this is where diamonds are made. This is where legends are made. Bedik sends it in. That seemed to be slightly off the center. But we are back on level terms, and we've said that countless times in this game. The captain delivers, leading by example. A beauty from Jovid Bedik. Just put that on the top corner. And just forget about it. But now, oh, three sets of kickers still left. Pressure going high, Claro. And I think that is an understatement <laughs> to describe what's been going on. And it is Kaole. Serge Kaole, four goals to his name this season. And it's now about converting this spot kick. And Quincy Kamarab denies it. Red will by the young keeper. Let's take a look. Kamarad, well placed. He knew what he was going to get. Let's go in the middle. Because you often see a keeper choose a side. But Kamarad just seemed to have his number. And Kaya a chance to get ahead. Daizo Horikoshi, the golden ball winner. Last PFL sends it in. Kaya FC in the driver's seat. The Kaya half of the Rizal Memorial Grandstand. Just in 
absolute joy. Uh, if we could take, uh, we could have a, even have a shot of the crowd today. Thousands rooting for Kai at the moment, online and here in the stadium. Kai again, one of the oldest clubs in the Philippines. As it's a chance now for Davao. And they get themselves back on the score sheet. So it is to all, but Kaya have a kick on hand. Oh, Cartalaro put enough power in that to get it at the back of the net. So up next, Audi Menzi. The burden is on him to maintain this lead because if Kaya can do so, heading into the next set, they'll pretty much have one hand on the trophy as we speak. And let's see how he performs here, Audi Menzi. Menzi versus Watara. Watara just played the 120 minutes of his life to get his team to this point. And he's been playing hurt. It's also delivered here. But Menzi keeps them in the driver's seat. It is 3-2 as we head on to what could be the last set. Good guess there. They pick a spot, Odi Menzi. Tara went the wrong way. And uh, Quincy Camerad could win it for Kaya. Should he save the shot or a miss from Troy Limbo? It's sudden death with the fifth set of kickers already. Two youth national team players will decide the fate of this one. Troy Limbo from Cagayan de Oro. Quincy Camerad. Filipino born and raised in the Netherlands, but calls Metro Manila his home. Limbo sends it and gives them a lifeline. Three all, but Kai have a kick. Troy Limbo did not make a mistake there. Straight to the bottom. Did pretty well to keep his steam afloat. Now it's between Justin Bass. And Dini Watara. Justin Bass. Has been capped with the Philippine Ascals simultaneously while he was also suiting up with the U23 national team. A youth teammate of Quincy Camerad back when they were growing up in the Netherlands. A chance now. Sealing this, gives it to them, and is denied! This will carry on! Tabao Aguilas Yumak, another lifeline. It seems we have a retake in the works. The assistant referee has pointed that Aotara did not have at least one foot on the line. And we've seen everything in this match already. Sneaky goals. Save after save. Players playing the game of their lives. And we've seen drama. Justin Basso retake for glory. Send it in! Kaya FC Iloilo started his game on the back foot. Yannick Tuwason gave Davo a goal. Nano equalized. Fast forward to penalties. Here we are today. A perfect way to end this Copa Paulino Alcantara 2023. 
We've seen everything in this game, Ivan, or are we missing something? Great performance from both squads. Now Davao should keep their heads high. They have performed ultimately well against the PFL, the current PFL champions. And Kaya FC pull it, pulling everything out of the bag. And you know, that retake and that delivery from Justin Bass put them past. No shame. Dinia Watara did not like that call, but this is football. You see it as it is. Kaya FC emerged victors after this penalty shootout. My, oh my. And Kaya will be crowned their third Copa Paulino Alcantara in their club's history and in the tournament's history in stunning fashion. And it was 4-3 on penalties. And please stay tuned for the awarding ceremonies. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Confirmation after penalties. It is four for Kai FC Iloilo. Three for Davao Aguilas Umac. Robert Lopez Mendy failed to convert his kick. But Jovin Bidik, Daizo Horikoshi, Ori Menzi, and Justin Bass pull through with Bass giving us the decider. And fantastic sportsmanship between the two teams as they displayed. And fair play also to Davo Aguilas Umac for putting up a fight here and for being good sports in this game. Oh, they have played very well, Davao, from the onset. So again, surviving the group of death, willing their way to this uh, competition. They did. They did have to beat the top hotshot team in Cebu FC to get here. They just fell short, but uh, clapping for their fans at the moment. They they have superbly performed in this competition. Just unlucky at the end. But, you know, such is life. In foot, and it's the beautiful game, as they say. And, you know, Dini Watara just gave his all in this match. It's just feeling a bit down for the call, but it is what it is. Now, Kai FC enjoying themselves on the sides. They have played a perfect season. Winning both competitions already. Also won that uh, under-19 title earlier in the second division. A women's team has also garnered the same. So that's four trophies again, as you dictated earlier. A huge shout out to club director Paul Tolentino who has built this team. The dedicated staff of Kai FC for performing at expectations. Oh, they have nothing to be ashamed of and they can hold their heads high because they have nothing to put against Dini Watara for that slight error because he kept them in this game. Davao got there thanks to him, his stellar goalkeeping. They had to work together again with that makeshift backline where they, as they were missing, OJ Clarino and Pete Forosuela. Fofana Johan and Cartalarok stepped up well. Cartalarok often a member again in the starting 11, but was put at right back out of position. And kudos to Davao Aguilas, UMAC uh, management led by Mr. Michael Taide. And of course, this is their head coach, Aber John Rusgal, who was calling on the shots for them. But Kaya. Plenty, plenty of heroes for Kaya FC. 
first and foremost, Nano Amita, for not for if not for that smart move against Dini Watara, he has secured the equalizer to extend this match. And uh, obviously, you have Quincy Camerad, who has been instrumental in that penalty shootout. Two saves. What a performance at that shootout. And at the end, Justin Bass converted that retake and penalty. And there you go. Duncan Coach Gollum in ice water. As a tribute, of course. Often a tradition we see in sports. Coach Gollum had Coach Yu Hoshide with him. Maybe for two reasons, Ivan. Because Coach Yu Hoshide, of course, a very experienced assistant coach. And maybe for some protection to <laughs> make sure he doesn't get too wet. <laughs> but you were mentioning Quincy Camerad pulled off two massive saves. They were against high-level players. Yannick Tuason, Serge Kawali, very experienced players. And Quincy Camerad, a youthful goalkeeper. It's already hard to pull off one. What more he did do? And it, it was just great for Camerad to pull off those saves after the misses from uh, Robert Lopez Mendy. So, the IFC fans are happy here at the stands. Plenty of uh, smiles around. High fives as well for the Davao FC fans who came and supported their team. There's a lot of them actually. But sadly again, there could only be one. And as fate has it, it is Kaya FC Ilo Ilo. As we are getting our awarding ceremonies under way as we speak. And as we see Commissioner Coco Torre and Interim Secretary uh, General of the Philippine Football Federation here to grace the cere ceremonies. Alongside our newly elected Philippine Football Federation President and Mr. Gutierrez. As we are in that transition or that period of transition with outgoing President Mr. Nonong Araneta. And I thank you again for his service to Philippine football as we take it to announcer David Yumal for the awarding. Yeah. 
Look at it in the scheme of 90 minutes. They also got to end one all after 120 minutes in extra time. And it's just a penalty shootout where they fell. And they can just hold their heads up high. And the future is bright and fantastic that we have a returning team right here. A founding member of the Philippines Football League, if I recall correctly. Uh, they're mighty proud of their achievements. Davao Aguilas, UMAC FC. Very happy. You can see it from their smiles. It's, it's really great for them. We really tested their metal against the top team of this country and even pushed them to the limit as well. And on the way, they sure did pull off results again against Philippines Football League sides such as Monjola FC and Dynamic Herb Cebu. They did falter to Stalin Laguna FC. A team competing in the AFC Cup, second tier, of course, of Asian club football. But they regrouped. Silver medalists in the return. What a feat. Your golden boot winner, Abus Abusi. Ten to his name. He didn't find the back of the net this evening. He was not called upon in penalty shootouts, or I think he was subbed off. But well deserved, of course, with the way they just flex their firepower in terms of Kaya Ilo Ilo and their attacking numbers. Including this game, Ivan, they did score 56 goals. Abusi contributing to 10 of them. There you go, Quincy Camarad, the winner of the Golden Glove. Simone Rota 
enjoying this award. Best defender of the Copa. Technically the oldest player on the pitch. But Rota, well, he was sub off earlier today, but Rota has done very well in this tournament. <laughs> so far, so good for Kaya. Three for three in the individual awards. And Quincy Camarad again winning it, not because of the penalty shootout, but because of his display this entire tournament. When we look at goals conceded, of course, a goal difference. And he's Kaya's first choice keeper. So three for three for Kaya. Let's see who will take home best midfielder award. Paulo Bugas well deserved the award. He showed his class in this competition. And even today in this final against Kaya, he controlled the pace. Picked his teammates well. A mighty comeback at the top level of football. Well deserved award. And potential goal of the season too. Daiso Horikoshi, very well deserved. Of course, just wowing us. Daiso continuing from where he stopped, you know, um, finishing the Philippines Football League as the Golden Boot winner at Golden Ball winner. Golden Ball winner, of course, new equivalent to MVP. And wow, just six, six goals, 15 assists. What else is there to say about Daiso? We're speechless. Real game changer, it was Daiso Horikoshi. Played tremendously well all throughout the tournament. Uh, these gentlemen here up front, they pretty much deserved all of these awards. So there you go. Abusi, Golden Boot winner or best scorer. Quincy Kamra, the best goalkeeper or Golden Glove winner. Paulo Bugas, your best midfielder. Simone Rota, your best defender. As they are accompanied again by Commissioner and General Secretary Coco Torre and newly elected PFF President Mr. John Gutierrez. Kaya making it four for five in the individual awards. This is it. Ten games to the title here for Kaya and the Copa. They had to weather the group stage. They had to get past the knockout rounds. And they had to get past a stubborn Tavawagilas UMAC squad. They were the Goliath again, as he said, entering this match. But they just watered by the skin of their teeth. Number 12, Mariano. 
There you have it, the moment that they have all been waiting for. Kaya SC Iloilo reclaiming what they say is theirs and proving it without a doubt. They had challenges, of course, that they had to face, but here they are, champions again, three-time winners of the Copa Paulino Alcantara. They're they won it in 2018, also to 2021, but here again in 2023. And Kaya again entering this tournament as favorites. They had to juggle it with AFC Champions League competition. And so what a fantastic feat here. What a season for them, which is done domestically. But in these, it's not yet finished because they have a Champions League game, right, Ivan? Just going back to this competition, since we started in July, they have been very consistent, undefeated. They were pushed to the limit today because of great coaching and the great opponents. But hats off to the champions for doing the very best and getting a double for their club. Kudos to Kai FC Iloilo. Hats off to them. But that does it for not just tonight's broadcast, but for that of the entire Copa Paulino Alcantara. 2023. Alongside Clara Manzano, uh, this was alongside Ivan Gayares. This is Clara Manzano on call for this match. The game stress catching up with me already, and you were catching this on the Filipinas Live app, the PFL social media pages, and also on One Sports Plus. And thank you again in behalf of Direct Luis Josh Manabat, Graphics Operator Renzi Medina, Cameraman. Luis Arcilia, James Baltoviso, Miles Estrera, and Wayne Ting Zon. 
There you go again, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for supporting local football. It is This is the Copa Paulino Alcantara 2023. See you, have a good night, and may you have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Go forward to see.